guys well. We're finally stable, like financially. We have a place. Uh, we're planning on building. Um, I'm gonna build an addition and everything once I can get the stuff I need to do foundations. Because eventually, I'm gonna open up my own contracting company. Yeah, because I'm tired of making all these assholes so much fucking money. I just seen a bill for an addition I did. It's a teeny tiny thing. And it was like um, 110 grand of some shit. Jesus. And I was like, dude, that wasn't even there. He was on vacation while I finished that job. <laughs> I did the whole thing. And I'm project supervisor, so I had laborers and everything out there with me. But I usually like to have like him there to do it and the plumber because that's not I, I frame I, I do all the carpentry shit um, yeah. but I'm not messing with wires I don't mess with wires that's just the one thing I don't really fuck with I'm I'm really bad with computers and this right here just the zoom and that, that took me like a month to figure out <laughs> I'm having to go back and forth and get a new wires is it going to be on zoom Huh? Uh, it won't be on Zoom, but it will be uploaded to the U- to a YouTube channel. I've been oh, looking cool. for a, a podcast uh, platform that that does video and audio. Yeah, all I can find right now is audio. So right, but uh, we're already going. So JC, how do you pronounce your last name? I always put Sabala. It. Sabala. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's. I thought that's what it was. I've always said that, but I was like, yeah. I bet I'm butchering <laughs> the fuck out of that. No, one. not the. Uh... I've heard a lot of different versions of it, but pretty much everybody guesses it right these days, it feels like. Yeah, we, we, we use our brain a little bit. Like, I get Sibylla sometimes still. <laughs> Sibylla? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Chad Wallace uh, runs the heavy, heavy Anchor Open Mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cap for like three years. It was like a different pronunciation every time. Sibylus. Like, it was, <laughs> I'm like, bro, like... <laughs> Yeah. We've been we've been boys for like eight years now. <laughs> yeah, but I never said your fucking last name until Yeah, I'm I'm horrible last I realized how bad I was with names when I had to, when uh, I started hosting little like Mike Tobin's place at the back door. Yeah. I've hosted for him a couple of times. I don't know why he keeps asking me. It's a great opportunity and I do it. Hosting's great, man. I, like, a lot that's of people where you really cut it. your teeth. Yeah. I like just the fact that I'm I'm able to because as a one-liner, I, you know, you, you don't do too, I don't do too much crowd work. I work on more and more. I, uh, I try to. But if I'm doing like a storytelling set, it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But when I'm hosting, it's hard to be that monotone, just low-energy comedian that I am. And then go in and control the energy of the crowd if someone kills it. And then yeah. I bring it down for the next comedian to come on. There's just, just I, I probably overlook it too a lot. I'm looking Ho- overlooking Hosting a, is one of the most important mic. spots of the show. Right, that's what I feel. And it's it's where you really cut your teeth. Like there there are we had a, a handful of comedians locally on the newer guys that they sort of want to kind of like skip that that step. But like you've got to become a decent host before you can ever feature. Yeah. I, and not, not only I not, agree. not only from the standpoint of that's how the club is going to move you up anyway, if you're working a club. Yeah. And, but also, like, if, if, you can't, if you can't do a cold 10, it's like, it, does, it doesn't matter, like, if they're going to give you 30 minutes after that. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, if you can't do a cold 10, you can't keep people's attention for 30 minutes. It's sort of how it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... I completely agree. I, was, I just did a show with somebody. Uh, I did it for Nate. It was actually Nate, which it was, I don't know what he was doing, but he did like pedophile stuff for like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And nothing was hitting. Like, I don't know. I was like, dude. And he kept doing the, uh, all right, I'm going to hit you with this last joke and bring the next guy on. Because he wanted for to like finish 10 strong. For 15 minutes. He wanted like, to finish strong and they weren't landing. Yeah. So that happens. You're seeing people over in the corner, like <laughs> other comedians that are like, don't get rid of all the, the few guests we have. But he pulled it out. He, he did really good at hosting um, as far as controlling the energy and, and, you know, bouncing off of the other comedians' last punchline. Which I, I that's my favorite part is just being able to is I when I'm hosting I have to I'm part of the whole show so mm-hmm. I watch every fucking spot again I'm trying to think of a joke sometimes I can't but that's the funniest part is just off the you know mm-hmm. and being able to 
bounce another joke off of one of theirs. That's one of my favorite parts. But I just hated the fact that I'm so bad with names and I pronounce shit so bad sometimes reading wise. I, I listen to a lot of audio books. That's one thing me and Nate were just talking about. Like, does it count as reading? Because I know it doesn't count for writing. Like, I know if you actually read the word and it, it will help your writing. And I'm horrible with spelling, as I right. always have been. And I, I, I listen to a lot of audio books, but the, uh, the whole, the, the, the reading, like actual reading, I don't. I don't do so. The, I'm really bad with spelling, and when I'm up there looking at all these names, it's just like fuck. <laughs> like I, I really pissed off Mo Alexander, which was in town, and uh, it was just his credentials. Just bringing him on the first time, he it was loud. I asked him what he wanted. You know, what did you want? Yeah. And uh, he's like banned from uh, banned thirteen stations. I was like. I thought he meant like a band. Uh, that was the name of a band or something. And yeah, then I yeah, found yeah, out yeah. band from 13 radio stations yeah, 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 afterwards. Yeah. So I bring him on the first time like an idiot. And he calls it out. He's like, this stupid motherfucker. Stop smoking so much goddamn weed. But get up with me after this show. <laughs> he, was, he was cool. But that guy that was didn't really sound funny. like he got bent out of shape about it. Like, mm. he, it sounds like he had some fun with it when he got oh, yeah. up there. Oh, yeah. But... He was, uh, he made sure like the next time I, cause I did three, uh, he did three shows and I did all three and he was, he's like, this is what <laughs> he wrote it all down and shit. And had what? his old lady run it over to me and check on me. Cause he was a big guy. He's a big guy. Yeah. Like it just makes me look, he's like three or four of me. Yeah. He, he sits because he has to. <laughs> like, the people, <laughs> the yeah. people that I find, uh, that I've worked with, whether, whether I'm the host or there's another host there and I'm just observing how they treat the host. The ones that really, really care about their intro are the ones nobody knows about and probably won't know about for a while. <laughs> like, it's good to, like, keep the peace because you got to work with them the rest of the week. Yeah. And also, it helps the reputation of the club that you're working at because you want the club... To continue booking you, yeah. That's right. more so, a good impression for sure. But at the same time, it's not end of the world, right? Yeah. The only the only person that ever gets mad at you about about fucking up their intro, un unless you really made them sound bad. Okay. <laughs> Usually, man, I've never. I've never worked for anybody important that gave a fuck about yeah. their intro. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, you're absolutely every, right every, with somebody that's everybody that's already knows who I am here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's really what it boils down to. Because, like, um, one of the let's see, that like the second week I ever hosted was at this club called Hey Guys, um, and. Well, actually, the first two weeks I ever hosted, the fir my first two gigs, really. Um, one, uh, the first one was for uh, Mark Sweeney, who he's been in the game forever. That and, name sounds really familiar, Sweeney. Yeah, and well, he's he's, also he's also he's, <laughs> he's also local. Uh, I, I say he's local, like he's based out of here, but like he travels all over. For a while, he did uh, cruise ships, I think. Um, I hear that's but, brutal. It, that's that's what I can, that's what I hear. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I hear it pays amazing though. Yeah, I would um, like to do a blues one because I love blues music, like yeah. jazz and blues. Fuck yeah! But <laughs> right. send me on that NASCAR cruise or something. But like Sweeney didn't care because like, look, man, <laughs> he, he was he was sort of like, it like, there's people that just came out to see comedy. They don't know who I am. There's some people that did come to see me. They already know who I am. Your intro is not going to make a difference. And then the next week I hosted again, and it was uh, Dave Coulier. And I asked him, like, well, what do you want me to do for your intro? <coughs> and that's a gnarly first, like, first or second host. You mm -hmm. know, two lines. That's... Yeah. yeah. And Coulier was just, he was like, David, say whatever, man. <laughs> That's sort of he's just like he's Dig just like say yeah, <laughs> say say the full house thing. America's funniest people, I don't care. Right? Oh, yeah. It's like cuz there were people that specifically came to see him. 
Yeah. <laughs> he was like, and people knew him. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't. It just doesn't matter. Every once in a while, um, it was just once in a blue moon I'd run into somebody that really cared about their intro. And when I, when I was hosting, it was always features that cared about their intro. <laughs> and I'm like, you're you're a nobody on the show. Like I, like <laughs> I feature now, and if anybody ever asks, I'm like, dude, I really don't care what you say. Yeah, because Tim nobody knows asked, who I am. Yeah, Tim asked me that. He's like, "What's your? What do you?" I was like, "I don't, I don't have any, man. Yeah, I don't nobody, know. nobody knows who I am. Yeah. Whatever you have to say about me is not going to impress them." It's like, "Oh yeah, well, did you hear it's that?" It's not going to make <laughs> them laugh harder at my jokes. Yeah, he won a com- helium competition. Like you just three years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's just like just. Is, I was definitely going to leave, but now that I heard that, right? I'm <laughs> yeah. like. Just say whatever you think. Like, if you think I'm funny, say that next guy's coming up. He's real funny. Does like the like the go to, especially for features that don't really have like credits, is uh, clubs and colleges. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the go to. Like next guy tours clubs and colleges everywhere, and it's like you guys are gonna love him. Like that's what really, it doesn't matter. I really wouldn't even want to build up if I even got to that point where they're asking, oh no, I want to come out of the gate like. Bam, they don't know who the fuck I am. Or if they mm-hmm. do, that's a different story. But a lot of people don't. And I, I don't want you to say, like, all the build me all up and then I come out and either disappoint yeah. or or just the fact that I want it to be a surprise. Isn't that like what you work on? We work and practice and write and all that. And you don't want it to. I mean, everybody's different, like, with what they want with it. But, like. I guess. I yeah, like, know. for me, like, it's just. How long have you been doing it? Um, nine and a half years. Nine and a half, about that ten. Yeah. So, have you put anything out like yourself solo, like just cut an uh, an album or anything? No. Um, I've got the time to do it now. I just, I'm, you know how like they like say like art is never really finished. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's just where you stopped. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of how I feel about the act that I've been building, and I'm taking stuff out constantly, like, well, not constantly. <laughs> There's some jokes that I've told for years, uh, but it takes a long time to build, like, solid time, whereas, like, this is a joke that I feel confident will land more than 90% of the time I tell it. And then, obviously, with COVID, like, I haven't been doing as much this year. Uh, yeah, you've been like, you go out, you get a little rusty, so it's, it's right now, a lot of times when I perform, I don't come out with a set list. No. Like, yeah. I've, I mean, I've never brought a set list on stage and there's people that do. And I mean, that works for them. Right. Uh, I'm sort of a purist in that sense. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I would, I would, uh, I, I carry my little, I usually have this little thing right here, but it's mm-hmm. only got little one little words on it just to remind you you also have a different style than i do i got a lot of jokes to tell (laughs) yeah like for me like like if i've if i'm only doing a five minute like guess set or something that might be two or three jokes yeah maybe because i i mean i tell long jokes that that i've got several punchlines built into right right but like that's just the structure of my style of joke writing and then there's people that do a lot of one-liners, and then they've got to do a ton of jokes. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm learning. <laughs> it's like, it's, uh, I pretty much have to just, I don't even worry about getting a bunch of time. It's just trying to write a new five minutes every couple of months. Like, because for one, mm-hmm. I don't want to keep saying the same thing. In that new five minutes, there may be something that goes well with the older joke. How long have you been doing it? Uh I've only been performing for a year, actually a year next week. But right. I've been John Maddie started like six or seven years ago. I'm mm-hmm. super jealous. I love Maddie, man. Yeah, he's like my one of my. Me and him go back like car seats. When I, when I did live out here mm-hmm. the first time, when I went to the high school. Me and him played basketball together, and he's let me crash at his house and all kinds of shit back in the day. But uh, I remember he started it and. I've already told Matty this, so I don't feel bad. He was not that good at, at first. That's what was. Mm-hmm. That's what really made me start performing is because I didn't watch him for a couple of years, and I had been writing and wrote. I had notebooks that I, but I just never went out there and tried it, and never did. And then I seen how good Maddie was because I, right. I just remember seeing Maddie just bomb hard, like not even get sympathy laugh. You know, it was just like there were tricky. there were times I re- I remember like, but everybody everybody has rough sets. 
Um, what I remember about Maddie was how, uh, like, very early on, he was very likable, right? Like, even even if even if the joke was unrefined and it just wasn't really ready for stage, uh, you were still as you're watching him on stage, the because per- everybody's pl- playing a little bit of a persona of themselves, right? When they're on the stage, and his was very uh, accessible and likable and like and you like almost like pulled for him. <laughs> right? yeah. Even even if even if his jokes at the time weren't going well, you were still pulling for him and wanting to laugh. Yeah, right? I remember and then was... he'd hit you with one that would work. <laughs> yeah. He's got <laughs> some solid shit. Now last time I was, we performed well we've done two shows together like the other last week and a couple weeks before that but le- before covid he was working on this joke about knowing his penis wasn't that big or something because mm-hmm. his girlfriend does says it's so warm instead of being like, oh, it's so big. <laughs> and it was just the way he set it up. I was like, dude, that is killer. And I haven't got to hear him tell it like so, but I know he's been working on it. I've just mm-hmm. been waiting to hear it all polished up. But yeah, because and you're right. I do remember when John first started, I think he did a couple fitzes. And then all of a sudden he was at Funny Bone opening mm-hmm. up for like full blown comedians. And I was it wasn't until I, he actually polished up a, like a full 20, 30 minutes and I seen him at some show that I wasn't even expecting him to be there. And I seen him, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. He, he's one of my, it. he's one of my favorite guys to watch here locally. Yeah. Like there, yeah. I, I just really like John for one, like off stage. He's a good guy. But like, like he was somebody who also put the work in and you could tell he was improving his joke writing and everything was getting more refined. So it was uh, not like that. That's part of the fun of being in our community is watching people's progress. And he progressed pretty quickly, actually, I think, just no, yeah, my he, opinion. From where he. I like the I like the. Uh, what do you guys call like sign language that you guys have? Yeah, we've we've been <laughs> together for she, she yeah. Well, I think for I'm, anybody that is watching, <laughs> I don't have another camera. I'm working. I got I ordered a couple and then they were no good mm-hmm. and I sent them back and I'm just gonna try something else. Uh, but this thing, uh, everything, I'm horrible with this shit. But from what I looked up and all the the, the actual specs of everything, mm-hmm. it does fucking the 60 frames per second. Uh, 1080p 4k i mean that's a shit ton of gig gigs that it eats yeah. up but i mean it, it will keep up with it well for anybody that, was, that yeah. is watching this right now brad's wife like poked her head she just got home from work yeah, yeah. and they they had like this little Moment. Se- secret signals going back and forth i'm like i I don't know what's going hopefully on. she knew that that was roll me a joint come on <laughs> <laughs> no she'll roll herself one though that's for sure I, I, cor- I corrupted her. She was a good girl before she met me. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You said she was, fr- uh, before you said she was from Chesterfield? Yeah, she, uh, her parents still live out there. And she works at the West County Mall running the Sweet and Sassy. She's like the main person. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. And so if you have any nieces, let me know. I'll get you the hookup on the pink limo. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, she did all, she was She's great. I wouldn't have nothing that I have now uh, Mm -hmm. or be where I'm at if it wasn't for her managing my money. (laughs) I'm that guy. (laughs) That's like, I I make the money. I make good money, (laughs) but I spend good money real quick too. When the more I make, it's like, I make plenty. I can know I can afford it. And then Mm -hmm. at the end of the week, it's like, shit, I don't have two nickels to put together right now. (laughs) It's like a salon and spa for like toddler girls, right? Yeah. So she actually pulled my fucking credit made me realize what credit was and <laughs> I got knew all of it because I went to school because I was I went to school to be a uh, I was going to be wanted to work on Wall Street okay. and be a, a stock trader of some sort or a portfolio manager or something like that and found out that I didn't need to even be in college I needed to be at Wall Street and have some a fistful of money pretty much to yeah get in the game and I didn't have that but I went to the school and I, I still today I invest and trade I, I try to <coughs> tell plenty of, of all the time I'm like dude you gotta use your money as a tool stop fucking I know that but when it's in my hand on payday 
I am. Uh, I like nice things. That's my biggest issue. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to school for a little while at Fox, and then I went to uh, uh, Carolina. Mm. Uh, so and I, that's why I grew up on in, uh, the Outer Banks Islands over there, in Nags Head, um, where the Wright brothers flew the first. How'd plane. you end up here in Missouri? My mom uh, married my stepdad, ah, and gotcha, his gotcha. family's from all out here. <laughs> I yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So it's the uh, I don't know if he's. I don't think you've met him. He's a big, tall, black guy that's with a white family. So you know. So he stands out. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's he's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Especially standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so not even have dark. <laughs> Oh, you should hear, like, uh, when I first got into this, there was some jokes that he would, like, he kind of told me. He's like, because I had some, but it wasn't, they didn't go to that line. Yeah. And he's like, you should say this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I don't think I can say that, especially not going to the word up one. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> it's not a good idea, Pops. <laughs> I'm the only white guy there. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, but... uh He's he's funny. He's the one that pretty much why I, I'm into. I've always been into comedy, like because he always had the uh, he collect DVDs and VHSs with VHS back then, and he had all the deaf comedy jams, mm -hmm. like all of them, like the box sets and everything. And those were always playing. Or anytime somebody new came out, like I remember my because one of my favorite guys is uh, Jamie Fox as a com stand up comedian. Yeah. Like he used to kill it i don't know why he doesn't do stand-up anymore probably because there's not as much money in it in all honesty i mean that could be some of it that could be i mean it think of how much like material you have to like keep writing i mean building up an hour is like a just a straight up grind yeah and like if somebody's had like three or four of those already it's like you just got to keep doing that that's yeah. like, <laughs> it's that's insane yeah, that's what I was. Uh, yeah, that's when I heard uh, guys. I've heard of guys that try to do them in like six months. So I think it was a Joe Rogan podcast. Someone's like, I try to get my hour in six months and then polish it up for the rest of the six months, and then I'm ready to do my special at the end of that year. Granted, these guys are professional. The guys at yeah, the comedy yeah. store and shit. But, but like the only guys that really do that are like Louis C.K. Yeah, the the legends. Bill, maybe. Yeah. Lately, he's he's kind but of. But he like, doesn't come out with a new hour every year. Well, he has. Didn't he uh, last year really? Was it was in the Paper Tiger, and didn't he just release something else? Yeah, I think you're right. Who knows? It's I, I'm sure it just like sometimes different. people get hot. Yeah. Like. Yeah, like fucking. That, that's what blows my mind is it was Eddie Murphy and Delirious. He was like mm -hmm. 18, 19 years old. Something like that. He was that good. Well, and, he was twenty two in Delirious. He was twenty seven in Raw. 22 no. 22 I had ago. both of those like memorized <laughs> like completely memorized <laughs> yeah but he what did no he didn't start but did he start later well, like, he started he, when he was like 16 16 so that Chappelle started when he was like 14 yeah yeah he was going to his mom was taken <laughs> his mom and grandma yeah. I've watched a lot of stuff. Chappelle was always one of my favorites that that Philmont uh I mean the Fillmore um live show that he did the one that he's talking about um Apes, uh, somebody fucking apes, and that's how we had got AIDS. That was uh, the bus being held up by the homeless guy jerking kill, off. Killing them softly. Yeah, yeah I think it so. could have been killing them softly. It could have been. Uh, I know it was like was the, the Philmont live because he was talking about he wanted to do it there because he watched Robin Williams perform mm -hmm. there, and uh, that shit that just that whole special is just amazing. And then a couple of years later, he comes out with the Chappelle show and it was like, this guy is a God. Yeah. <laughs> like, he hit legend status. Cause that, that Rick James bit shit. Mm -hmm. I still hear that. Shit. Yep. You get somebody drunk enough at a house party. Dude, I saw him. Uh, it was the oddball, oddball, oddball comedy festival. This was up in Chicago. It was, a. Uh, the whole festival was organized by Funny or Die, and this was 2015-ish, before he came like came back hard, before the Netflix uh, deal that he signed. Never, there was still rumors of him being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so people were still saying that kind of stuff, and like he just brought the house down. It was, in, it was amazing. It was phenomenal just sitting there watching a master at work. 
Yeah, I've never once watched one of the, the top level comedian. I've never seen a top level comedian bomb. And I've yeah. heard of people going and I've seen videos of it. Yeah. But I've never been to one where they weren't able to get themselves out of anything. I've also never been or had one of them fucking crazy drunk Karen bitches. And I use some offensive material. Like mm-hmm. kind of build my whole set around <laughs> offensive <laughs> material. You might and that's something John told me after my first set. He's like, you might not want to open with abortion jokes. <laughs> like, yeah. You might want to bring them in a little softer. Like, so, all right. Especially out that way where, like, uh, it's a pretty conservative area. Like, I don't know, Fallon, Missouri. Yes. Oh, over there. Yeah, I go to the, t- yeah. It was a helium, though. And I pissed off. The only one I pissed off was Alex Blodgett. Have you met him? Yeah. Yeah. He's one that, like, came out of the gate fucking hot like i saw him his first night uh it was like november last year and Mm -hmm. he almost choked like because he he turned around and was getting ready to walk off the stage and then he did the you know because he's got that that tick that he gets when he's real nervous yeah and he leaned into that shit like his material just went so well with that nervous tick that he had and i was like oh shit Mm -hmm. and uh he's he writes he's a putting lot, in too. some work yeah he writes a lot he's always messaging me with a, a fucking two page long joke <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like what do you think of this I'm like man <laughs> <laughs> I can break this apart all day long but all I look for is the fucking the, the setup and the punch that's you know, but yeah. I write the same way kind of as a lot of storytellers I write everything out as a story Cause that's what I thought I was gonna be mm-hmm. that's how I started thinking I was gonna do stories and then one night, it was just drunk, and I was just like, I got a bunch of jokes I want to try out, and I don't have the time. So I just wrote down all the punchlines and did those. And yeah. I, I enjoyed it much more. But It gets to the joke faster, and yeah. it increases your laughs per minute. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, it might be And then you start whole. to stretch it back out when you start to write a longer joke. Then you'll start making like miniature punchlines in between, and it build up. And then when you hit like that closer of a punchline on it, it's like a crescendo and like you just hit it. Yeah, there's uh the one I think is famous for that was Stephen Wright. He's one of my favorite. Stephen Wright's amazing. It's just a genius. Like I I watched some of his stuff and I'm like, how did like where did you fucking think of that? Like how did you even think me of up, that? Like okay, so when I started there was still uh kind of a like a leftover like right after um, Mitch Hedberg died, there were a ton of people doing Mitch Hedberg style, right? I've tried to stay away from that as hard as I can. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, but there was still a little bit left over, like, because that, that always happens. Like, you always get somebody that's really hot, and then a, bun- a bunch of newer people are basically emulating that person because that's who they look up to. And you're always seeing kind of cycles of it. For a long time, it was Eddie Murphy, and then... Um, Chris Rock, I remember a lot of people. There was people that were, but Chris Rock was so unique in his delivery that it was hard to emulate that. Uh, Mitch Hedberg, it's a lot easier to emulate that that monotone. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it was, I always thought it was funny. It was like, well, if if that's who you're emulating, like, why don't you ever watch Stephen Wright? Yeah, like, that's the king. That's the guy. Like that was the guy that like <laughs> made that a thing. <laughs> And you know yeah, I mean? he basically, I've, I've always looked at it as like Mitch Hedberg jokes was uh, Stephen Wright's first thought of that joke. That was what he thought. And then he mastered it. Mm-hmm. And then I, I remember going, like looking into him. The, he's got like he's a Stephen Wright with a little more peace, love vibe. Yeah. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And he talks, I guess he's a little bit more edgy than um, Steve. Stephen Wright, I've learned is for the most part, pretty clean, um, mm-hmm. which you don't realize it when you're listening because of the stuff he's talking about. And then he says, it's just like, and then I watched him, I watched him there. And when I first started becoming a one liner and I was like, I I had to stop. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to fall into like Mm -hmm. being, you know, basically pulling some shit or saying something like he does. And that's, I I know I want to stay away from that, but I can still appreciate how fucking genius he is. Mm -hmm. The fact that he he wrote a movie, got a Grammy for it. And, like, I don't think the movie was that great, I'll be honest, but coming out of him, you just don't expect it. He's so, right. you know, you just, he, I, I thought he died too. <laughs> and then I just found, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, he's got a show in Texas? <laughs> like, 
I have to go to Texas. That's where I want to go. I've been trying to talk my wife into moving there. Oh, yeah? Have you ever thought about leaving? Like Austin or something? Yeah, yeah. I hear it's getting big with comedy. It's going to be big. That's where, well, I mean, Rogan, and then you've got all the other guys that have followed him, and they're Mm -hmm. wanting to build that big, huge comedy ranch thing out there. Yep. And there's already the improv and and all the other bigger names. Well, Cap City just shut down, but that... There's going to be a bunch of things filling that. Um, but, yeah, Austin is always... Have you done Austin? Have I have done? not done Austin. I've done Dallas. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is one thing I've heard about Texas, too, is there it's just, like, different states, which I understand because I lived on the beach right next to the Great Dismal Swamp, so if you get off that beach and mm-hmm. you're in corn, you're where the grave digger is. They created the grave digger and right. shit, and it's like, holy shit, and that's what I hear, like, Texas is like, you go one place, and it's a completely different town, and yeah. like, Austin's much I was more also there. way newer then. Yeah. I mean, it was this was, like, 2012, 2013. It's been a long time since I've traveled that far and done comedy. Um, yeah, I thought like a while ago that was the goal was to move away, but then I had my son and it's kind of hard to, yeah, to just leave him here. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Well, yeah, I don't know the situation with the moms, but I'm sure that would have been a battle to try to do. Yeah, no, yeah. I've got a pretty good relationship with my son's mother. So that's awesome. My In best. fact, tomorrow, uh, my girlfriend and I are going over to her and her husband's house and we're doing a Christmas dinner. Not tomorrow, on Christmas Day, sorry. Um, but it's going to be all of us. That's awesome. My, my best friend, uh, Matt, <clears throat> him and his um, baby's mama is, is like that. I remember I went on a, a float trip, which you guys, you Missourians and these fucking float trips. <laughs> Fuck. Dig a hole, put some sand in it. It'll be a little better. <laughs> you know? But anyways, go there and find out his his ex is there and they they broke up pretty bad i guess they were both heavy drinkers at the time and she slept with his friend he woke up past from being passed out drunk and found her but they're like camping together and and like it was just a little awkward at first but then i realized how tight they were they were good friends still and yeah that's that's cool because i've had some crazy exes but then again i've had some cool ones that I think if we would have seen other people like that, we could still be friends, but Mm -hmm. they're, I guess, too immature. I never had no kids with any of them that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. I did live on a tourist island, little beach, and people would visit for a weekend or a week. Changes the whole dynamic. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, so, with... You didn't, you're not, are you, do you have plans of doing it? Have you, did you have, I know COVID shut everything down. Yeah, um, I mean, I was, I was doing a lot more. I was getting booked a lot more right before, uh, where I was. Wor- it was actually starting to become a little bit of a problem because, you know, when you work every weekend for five weeks straight or something, it's hard to handle your responsibilities as a parent. <laughs> yeah. So that was cre- that was creating a little bit of friction. But then COVID happened. And then it was kind of a moot point at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you, um, you still have the relationships with the people that you were booked with? That, yeah, you know, telling you, yeah. That's oh, I'm hoping for that Bobby's like, place. I kept in touch with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like, it's gonna be, like once things you know go back to normal, as people talk about, I think it's gonna be a different world. Like, there's going to be clubs that have shut down. There's gonna be, <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I, so. I follow that very closely. We have a. I think it's 12 million people, if they don't pass this bill, are going to be hit with... There's 12 million that are at least two months behind on their mortgage Mm -hmm. because of that mortgage forfeiture shit that they give them. Instead of tacking it onto the back end of the loan and just extending us six months, oh, you didn't pay for six months, here it is. However long until it's all taken care of. Instead of just doing the deferment or something. Yeah, because now these people, January hits, they owe five months. They couldn't pay the past five months. What makes you think they're going to get this money to be able to pay... You know, and the average is a thousand dollars. I think is what they're saying, eleven hundred dollars or something average, rent and and mortgage, which is about mine, I, about about thirteen. So, but we didn't take that because we didn't want to be penalized. Because I think there was something in there that her father was telling me about, and he's like, if you don't need it, don't do it. And we had money saved up, and they hooked us up with that twelve hundred dollars. 
So I was, we were fortunate enough to make it through. And I had yeah. friends that put me on under the table. The company I worked for shut down and is out of business. But that's because he was already robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep everything right, going. Right. So uh, I just did, moved out houses for under the table work, just 250 bucks a day <laughs> on top nice. of my unemployment. I never got, I've never gotten And it was off the books. Yeah. So yeah. my wife was able to fill all that stuff out. She knew I wasn't going to. Like, I wouldn't have gotten so, the So you're basically putting on the internet <laughs> that you defrauded the government by collecting <laughs> Um, you know how long I've, I've had a job since I was 15 and I'm working. Like, I collected my, unemployment <laughs> while I was getting paid. <laughs> no, it was only, you know, this is going to be edited out, right? <laughs> yeah, be like, right. I'll just put a little of one of those DJ signals. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you put it up there, I'm horrible with editing. I told you I'm bad with this shit. <laughs> That's funny, man. But, um, no, I don't know. I, I it was just a smart move at the time mm -hmm. you know, to, to take the money and, and, and work the, uh, what I could. It's not like I was full time. Moving. Right, right, right. I wasn't on the road. The guys would have a corporation or something in Clayton. A lot of stuff was still getting shut down. And it was, when it got bad, it was like people weren't allowing us in their buildings. And stuff. Yeah. But I did get to see a lot of nice Clayton high rises that I never thought, like top floor. It's like holy shit, I'm never, mm -hmm. never really, really nice up there, and cheap compared to what I'm used to on the East Coast. Like yeah. what you see out and you know on the water. Dude, the cost, the cost of living here in St. Louis is you can't dirt beat cheap. It. Yeah. it is dirt cheap compared to everywhere else. Yeah, a house like this is a million bucks easy where I'm from. And that's all. And that's not next to the water. Like you can't mm -hmm. see the ocean from <laughs> on that million dollar right. house. And so when we don't have basements, but you know. So on to the next. I always ask this one. What do you think about the aliens? About the aliens? Yeah. Like, the, do I think they exist? Well, the CNN and the Pentagon came out about six months ago and said they have recovered unearthly made vehicles, and they released three military videos of UFOs, the the, the gimbal, the Tic Tac, and... Dude, I got to do some research. Oh, on yeah, this. dude. This was six months ago? Yeah, it was like six or seven months ago. And then just two weeks ago, the, uh, the top space uh, uh chief of security of space of israel the military space of security of chief whatever said that they are real we've been in contact with them we really wouldn't it's they haven't told us because we can't understand them and comprehend them and america and israel has been in contact with them for years and has a base on mars and like every this made the news and yes and this is like and they're like you don't think everyone's gonna call you quack he's like i don't care Look at my credentials. He's like, I have this degree, this degree. I've been in the military, running the space program or whatever for this long. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean. And he's like, there's a galactic federation or something like that. He's like, basically the way he put it, which is crazy because there's that hacker in England mm -hmm. back in the early 2000s that hacked the Pentagon and NASA. And they found, recovered these uh, documents that were talking about non-earth terrestrial um officers and colonels and generals and then spaceships that had different <laughs> like uss whatever like and it was like in, supposedly and now a lot of people called him a quack and said he was lying about what he was hacked into but n goes right along he said there was a federation a galactic federation yeah. 20 years later we have this guy saying uh, the, the chief of space saying it it's <laughs> Believe me, I've never been the one that like was out there just going around. Do you believe like yeah. aliens? But well, there's for, enough out there now for people talking about it. The way I already like, believe right. that that there is another life form. Absolutely, out in the universe. like I, I just n refuse to believe that this is the only planet. <laughs> like, well, mathematically <laughs> and statistically, yeah. It's but I also think like if there are life forms out there that have better technology than us that are able to discover us are probably keeping their distance. Like the, <laughs> these people are sav savages. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Just, that's... just watching the way we argue over politics and <laughs> just like, God, these people are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working. Like, we don't want that. We don't want you infecting us with your, <laughs> with yes. your ignorance. <laughs> well, that, yeah. Well, that's what that, 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 the space of the, the, whatever the chief of space was talking about, like, they're not allowed by law. The galactic law jumped into 
to really interfere with us <laughs> and they're like it's a uh, an experiment or they're watching us they're, or, yeah probably just observing yeah and it's it's a little nuts. probably having a laugh here or there <laughs> and, yeah well i was i've worked on it been working on a joke about what if they what if the ancient sumerian um epic of gilgamesh and the anunnaki theory is correct mm -hmm. and they really did make us i want to if they come back i want to ask the dude like what did you what was you thinking with different races and colors <laughs> like <laughs> what's he gonna respond well you know <laughs> tom thought it'd be funny and we all get a laugh but <laughs> we know, didn't know you guys yeah. were gonna <laughs> treat each other you fucking white ones just fucked shit up like you guys destroyed everybody <laughs> Even after Dr. Seuss wrote the Sneetches. <laughs> like, y'all didn't get the clues? <laughs> so, but that, it's, it's, it's pretty nuts. I, I really, I don't, I've always secretly, not secretly, but I've watched the UFO shit. I've followed it. Like, a, a good, even if it's not real, I can tell it's CGI. If it's good, I'll entertain. Like, even conspiracies. I'm, I don't. I don't believe in the Q or none of that. I guess you have to say that now if you say that. But mm -hmm. I can watch a good... The, today, these YouTubers and stuff d develop and edit and put together some high-quality fucking <laughs> shit. Yeah. And I'm uh, open-minded enough to where I can you, watch it as entertainment. Mm -hmm. most. But most of the time, I can, I'll laugh at them. It's the ones that have like, well, there's a CIA document here that talks about this and then this and this. Those are the ones that get me into the rabbit hole. And I'm like... The ones that are all about the government shit, like the, mm -hmm. the MK Ultra back when I was like probably still a teenager. I went down that rabbit hole for a while. <laughs> yeah, but, there's a lot of secrets out there. <laughs> I could only imagine, like, because I've lived right there um, in Virginia for a while. I grew up uh, North Carolina, Virginia. It's like mm -hmm. the state line's not too far, and we would take trips out to Richmond and shit drive around would do different things and i remember my buddies i wasn't with them but they went down the wrong road how far was that from langley that's where they were at okay. they went down the wrong road nothing was marked and they just got met with fucking <laughs> yeah, cia they think they, they like held them for a couple hours took their phones interrogated them and these are like 18 year old stoners like driving around trying to smoke a blunt or something yeah. you know and they didn't play around, and I was like, holy shit. It's seriously a one. They got busted. My buddy had to do a federal probation. The PO officer came every week and piss-tested this guy. All the way from another state. From like, <laughs> It was Jeez. like, god damn, dude. But, like, yeah, and I've seen out there in Virginia, Norfolk is the world's largest military base. Okay. And there's just so much activity, and there's so many jets that's all you hear that's why there's so many bumper stickers that say i love jet noise and it's like no it's horrible like your <laughs> sh sh windows rattle if you're next to norfolk when they're taking off and that's all that is out in the ocean you see these big huge like jet carriers and fuck they uh they're doing something they're, there's no <laughs> need for all of that shit like right. when you see it all out there like if you if you see the aerial views of the military base or you're flying over it or coming in and you see it and you just see the as far as the eye can see just these ships that are like cities they literally have like subways and McDonald's on them and stuff <laughs> on the ship and they're huge these things have stores and Dude. everything they have their <laughs> own commissary and everything on these ships that go out there in the sea and stay forever like well, months, six months at a time. As my uh, buddy's dad was a master sergeant, I believe, and he had to deal with all the guys that would be suicidal. He was the counselor because a lot of guys lose their shit out there and mm -hmm. don't see land for six months. A lot of people get weird thoughts, yeah, and lose it. So uh, he was telling me about all kinds of shit they have. They have like gyms. They have. It's basically, they have a store that they can go buy stuff and send gifts, and, and they have a store of cigarettes and, and soda, everything. It's it's just like a commissary on the base. And I don't know huh. if you're, you, were you military? No. No? You no. look like you could be. You're just uh, healthy, huh? I played football in college. Played football. In college? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, who'd you play for? Lindenwood. Lindenwood. It's a small school. Yeah, yeah, but it's still not a bad one. That's a good school. They weren't good when I was not there. Not football, but that's <laughs> a good one. To, I remember my um, my mom cleaned uh, 
lady, like the top f- interior designer of St. Louis. I think it was Martha or Marta or something like that. Mm-hmm. And her daughter went to Dartmouth, and her son played football for Lindenwood. They had a couple years that were pretty good. And I remember just seeing pictures, and then he went on to play for like an actual university and then warmed a bench for a year or two, I think. <laughs> uh, it, it's, my, my mom cleaned a bunch of uh, Rams players' houses. Uh, Ryan Tucker, one of the defensive, uh, the year that he won the Super Bowl, he was the captain. And this guy's nice. hand. Like you can tell who's gonna make it <laughs> when you see these guys and they're just huge. Even yeah. like Marshall Falk is a littler guy. He was still a big, like he was mm-hmm. a manly man. <laughs> like I was a twig compared to these guys. I was a kid too, but just to it, see how big it, they are. It's funny, like when you see uh, any of these players, like like in like just out and about when they're not on the field. Even the small ones, you can are, tell that yeah. they're just. Like zero body fat, they're just perfect. Like Dude, I would, so I grew up in Kansas City, and for a while, Warren Moon was one of our backups, and this was like in the twilight of his career. So he was, he was an old man, <laughs> right? And then that means uh, he was twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was. He was like in his like mid forties at that point, mm. and uh, I went to go work out at at the gym close to my parents' house, and uh, he had a personal trainer there. And the dude had a body like a 25-year-old. Like, I was just like, how, how is this dude? <laughs> like, yeah. it's freaking nature. Like, That's what I was thinking and he, about. Like, though. he looked so old on the field back then. Compared to everybody else yeah. moving. Yeah. But then, like, when he's just wearing, like, shorts and a T-shirt in the gym, I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I like, see. Like, I might guys. never look like that. <laughs> oh, I've already given up on him. I've... I've frame i'm pull myself up a million times a day in the between roof trusses i can't get bigger and i can't mm-hmm. i get lower ripped but i see some of these guys that are just like it's like what are you doing <laughs> like <laughs> is that all you do is work on that like yeah i play football <laughs> like okay and that's i guess messed up because some of his genetics man yeah my my brother's like that he's i think he got his DNA and he's like part Neanderthal or some <laughs> shit. Like a, a small percentage of him. But he is one of those brute force, like his hands are just like steel. Like he hits mm-hmm. you and it's you knew. And he was a linebacker and he was, you know, had a shit ton of stars on his helmet for either breaking bones or making kids <laughs> cry. Right. I was like, that's a horrible incentive. I was a basketball player. We didn't have nothing like that. <laughs> you weren't putting those stickers on my Jordans. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, 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 I can't get, I, I don't even try. I see guys that work with me, come to work for us that are like, I don't know, they'll be like at the end of the day, all right, I got to go to the gym and work out. I was like, oh, let's see what you're doing by the end of the week. Yeah. I want to know if you're still going to the gym at the end of the week. Yeah, because physical labor, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I feel, I guess if I went to the gym and tried to and took like the supplements that, you know, but mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I used to be really, really athletic. I mean, basketball, surf, skate, skim. Uh, I played baseball, lacrosse, a bunch of different shit for mm-hmm. a while. And then, I, I don't know, I kind of got I turned into a geek. <laughs> got to, <laughs> well, eventually, like, you get bored with it if it's not taking you anywhere. Kind I just kind of get hurt. Yeah. yeah I, I broke mean, my ankles, and, like, I started a new job, and... It was a big job. My buddy stuck his neck out for me to get. I, I cleaned up, like, piss clean and everything. Mm-hmm. It took me, like, a month and a half to get actually clean, which really shocked me. But broke my ankle, like, two days before skating. <laughs> yeah, so I had to tape it up with my boot and everything because I didn't want to lose the job. Yeah. And because I it would – they didn't need really anybody. Uh, our friend was just helping me out because his dad, you know, it was – It was a favor. Yeah. And I did not want to fucking. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember eating like Vicodin, like they were candy, and puking half the day because I can't take pain pills. I can. That's. I'm glad about that. I cannot take any kind of pain pill. It makes me puke every time. Puke and itch. Hmm. Like yeah, I, I can smoke weed. And so it's like an allergy to it almost. Right, I guess it just makes me real nauseous. I get sweat. I get like the hot sweats and then cold and then my and toss. Yeah, I hurl. But once I get the puke out, I'll be good to go for like about an hour, and then I'll start sweating. <laughs> <Real bad. laughs> but it might have been because I was doing concrete too. 
That's a hard job. I see those guys with them fucking foundations pouring concrete. It's yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> it's kind of so heavy. <laughs> I remember being the shoot guy and like filling up. I was supposed to. I was curb and gutter. I did I'm in between a machine and just filled the hopper. But if that tire, they, they, if they got up on a little bit of an uneven grade, that <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Pull my little ass. You just see hair. <laughs> Concrete out in the middle of the street. It sucked. But I guess that's, I don't know. I do good in construction. What do you do? I sell uh, commercial print equipment during you, the day. You seem like a salesman. <laughs> what does that mean? You're, 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 you're uh, smooth at the, 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 the tongue. You know, got that tongue of sugar or whatever. You really, <laughs> people, you. People get in, you start talking, and they're just like, yeah, what is he saying? Yeah, <laughs> I want to hear. Well, then I come in, I <laughs> Like, I don't know, because the industry I'm in, so, like, if you go to, like, a commercial printer, um, the, uh, or even, even, let's just say, like, uh, you go into, like, an office depot, right, mm-hmm. and they've got their little copy center, they have bigger machines than just your typical, like walk, like what you see at the library or in any, any typical office. Hmm. So, um, those machines, like they call them MFPs, multifunction printer, and they'll typically spit stuff out, like whatever you're trying to print in full color, and they might have a finisher on it. So, like if you want it to like staple in the corner, it might fold it, it might do that. But like if you've got a lot more specific stuff to do with it. Like, there's a thing called cutting something. Like, let's say, let's say you're making a magazine. Yeah, I'm gonna borrow this real quick yeah. as an example. Now, this is way bigger than something that would be printed off on. But so this is not called. Okay, so you see how on the corner right here it goes all the way to the edge of the paper. That's called full bleed. Uh-huh. Okay, so there's no printer that actually prints that. So this is about eight and a half by 11 right here. So this would actually be printed on 12 by 18. Uh, And then the image actually goes further out. And as it's going through the machine, there's another accessory on that machine that'll puts these all in order and then folds it in half and puts a staple in the middle. Okay. And then you've got a face trimmer that comes and cuts off the edge right here at this spot. Okay. So you've got about half an inch that's sticking out cuts it off right there and then in order to get what's called a square fold like this there's a whole other part that goes on there and all these machines like when you add them all up they get closer to like 70 80 hundred thousand dollar machines jesus christ so like it's Fuck! I spent like a to a hundred or something on that 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 one over there. I barely I bought mm-hmm. it for that damn show. I was gonna print my own flyers and, and tickets and all that stuff up. But now my wife uses it for our Etsy store. For oh, that's cool! I didn't know she got an Etsy store. Yeah, well, I do everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does the. I, it's just stuff like this. Like I do all kinds of different furnitures and like little shelves and um, just different look give it kind of a rustic stuff. look yeah well i mean it's pretty like that that over there her dad wants a uh, vinyl uh for his records because he just bought a new record player okay and it's i'm gonna put a couple little things in there and and cut those if some fancy so that way. they all just fit yeah, that makes the, sense yeah. and i do that and then i got him a couple built them some ones that hang on the wall and, he, and it's just a plank of wood pretty much that fits in and it's got a hanger on it uh, I really like those. I've been working on putting one. I'm going to put one on that wall eventually of all my... i got a shit ton of vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of special vinyl, like this green one. i got a bunch of those custom like uh, special editions. But, yeah. I don't, I, that's what you should get in. That's printing. That's, I looked into that. That's an expensive machine. <laughs> <laughs> to cut vinyl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I... I to print on a vinyl like i've looked into that i was like they have to have something now you know some mm-hmm. kind of you know it's thousands of, a couple thousand dollars just for one that does a one single one at a time <laughs> it's like jesus because i thought i got this bright idea i was like man nobody records vinyl anymore with their comedy because i've got so many that's what my big thing is going to like, like doing a like pressing the vinyl and everything yeah like i would go to the thrift stores and i could f- go through all the 
records they have. And I get it. Every now and again, I'll come across a gym that's old fucking comedy out record. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got so many of them. And no, nah, they're not always good. Especially yeah. those old, old guys. Right. And Because, uh, I mean, just the culture changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I can't stand listening to 80s comedy anymore. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff, like, when you get back into those times, like, I wasn't born until 89, so I don't mm-hmm. know half... You know, I've said that there are comedians out there, and that's what separates legends is that some legends legends have those timeless jokes that it's mm-hmm. just going to be funny no matter when you hear right. it. It's a good joke. You got your priors, your Carlins. Yeah, yeah. Like but he did seven. Dirt, Carlin did the seven words you can't say on television in like seventy two. Yeah, it was, yeah, like that's it's still one thing holds about up. yeah Carlin, <laughs> but there is he also does have a lot of material that is I feel. That was aimed just, uh, talking about something back then. Somebody that was in the news that mm-hmm. was you know that year. That I don't know who the guy is, and a lot of people my age don't know who it is. So we don't really get the full stint to the joke. We don't right. know what that guy originally did. Because he was big on counterculture. And stuff yeah, like that. yeah, and that's I love comedians like that. I'm one, I like um, like Lee Camp. He does the um, RT for uh, Redacted Tonight. It's like a news comedy news kind of thing. Okay, but. It's um see I don't get big on like in my act I never get political like ever. Yeah, I've got my opinions on politics, but I don't I try to it's too difficult. It's too sensitive a subject nowadays. Mm. Uh I really do feel like a lot of people who was the last special the big guy that came out. I felt like they're whole, being held that this woke thing that is that cancel culture in the comedy scene, these people that can come and just shut your fucking shit down by mm taking something out of context and you're at a comedy show too i think it's a lot of these guys aren't aren't doing their what they could like they right. have a lot better material or that joke would be a lot better if he said it the way he originally write, wrote it but they're like oh, i don't want to get canceled so let me just mm-hmm. tame tame that up a little bit it's like fuck that <laughs> <laughs> i loved the fucking brutal the dice clays the sam kennison's you know mm-hmm. those are those were some of my favorites like Daniel Tosh, he's one that's. See, I was never really big on Tosh. Yeah, I like but the guys I, that can touch the line. And, and but really, the guy I like that that does uh, is Jesselnick. Jesselnick is a uh, he's hit that last one was Netflix special he did. I think was brilliant. Like, uh, yeah, it, it was his first two were still his best. Like I think. Yeah, and then I forgot what the third one was called, and then uh, what's the what's his latest one? But his first two were Shakespeare and Caligula. Yeah, those two were fantastic. Yeah, I listened to those on the car. Drive but his, his third one, he tried to switch his style up a little bit, and it was okay. Is that the one when he was in the leather jacket? Mm, I don't even remember. like. I watched it once, and it was very forgettable. Oh, yeah. and I remember the what I remember was he was switching up his style and trying something different, and then. I don't think his he's last so, one, he yeah. kind of went back to it. Okay, yeah, this this last one. I think I know he like opened up with a dead baby joke or something mm-hmm. on the one, and it's like he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm that amazing. You know, you're sitting there thinking, <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> and it's like he, his timing. He he's one that actually made me realize that I could do a lot more time if I just timed my shit out. Right. Learned how to catch the like in betweens of the breaths of the laughs and. Mm-hmm. Which actually help you get more applause because <laughs> they'll yeah. hear the whole joke and you, you can get in that rhythm. Don't there's want to step so on much, the laughter. <laughs> yeah, there's so much shit that it didn't even ever occur to me until I actually started doing it. It's just like you just gotta write funny shit. And I wrote, yeah. wrote, wrote, and I was like, no, you gotta be able to. There's a lot of mechanics. To <laughs> yeah, the people the people don't think about till they do it. Yeah, and then there's the people that are like fuck that, or the ones that are like me, which I'm a. I'm a drug user, so <laughs> that's why I enjoy comedy so much. <laughs> Dopamine rush, baby. No, it's it's almost like playing sports again, like being on the yeah. stage. You know, Get, it really is. I was a point guard, so I was always always the guy that got seen coming, bringing the ball down the court, setting up the mm-hmm. play. So I don't know how you guys played football with everybody on the field, no one knowing who was who. <laughs> how, why is there no one paying attention to me? You know, if that was the case, I would have been a wrestler. I was a wrestler. Were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and my brother. Like You guys are built the same. Fucking mm-hmm. wrestler, football player. He went Army, the light infantry. Oh, okay. Army. Yeah. Two tours, I think. 
fucked him up. Did it? Yeah, man. We were like, well, he wasn't. I called my brother because we adopted him. We were just best friends. How old is he now? He's, I think, 33, 34 now. Okay. He's a little older than me, but we were like best friends, and he lived right across the street. And he had a real rough upbringing for there for a while. And I just had my me in my own bedroom. And I was like, I'll share my room. You let him move in, Mom. And ever since then, we were <laughs> – my mom did the paperwork to adopt him, basically. And we were tight until he went to the military and then came back. And it was like a different, different dude. It's hard to even connect with him. Yeah. But he was one of the guys that was running around, like, after shit would happen, like bombings and clear, I guess, with clear places. I'm not 100% sure that's all he did, but I know he hurt himself clearing a house that I think got bombed and, like, the floor was weak and he fell through and hurt his knee. But he's got, like, a picture of him in Saddam's pool that's all blown to shit from when they, I guess. That's crazy. Yeah. And, but you can definitely tell, like he got in trouble for some, I guess, other vet because they go to the, they have to go to these. So things. he was on tour when it was still the war on terror, basically. When yeah. All that shit was going on. Oh yeah. Back when that was still just a, uh, still just a teenager. You know, it was, yeah. uh, no, not even a teacher. It was still a kid. <laughs> Maybe 10 years then. Now we're what? 20, 21. Let's see. That would have been, yeah. Cause okay. So. And when 9 11 happened, uh, I had just turned 20. So, okay. yeah, I was in school. I remember them wheeling in the, the, the TV, and I was like, why the fuck would they bring the news on? Because the mm. news was on. I was like, fuck the news. I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And then everyone was upset, and I really didn't even understand what was going on until someone, yeah. like, you know, I actually, it hit me. I was like, oh. Yeah, like, man, I hope that pilot does. You know, <laughs> that's sort of what I thought at first because when I first heard about it, it was I was just standing in line in a, in a cafeteria, and somebody saying like, "Yeah, like a plane just flew into the World Trade Center." And I was like, "What?" I was like, "Are people okay?" Like I was like, "Yeah, what it's... the what was wrong with this pilot?" And then they then we started to get more yeah. information. But then was... they found their passport perfectly on a couple blocks away from <laughs> I went down that rabbit hole. We don't even know to go there. It's, I don't know. The, the nine 11 things, a horrible situation. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what happened, <laughs> like right. either side. A lot of people died yeah. at the end of the day. A lot of people died. Yeah. And even if, that was the terrorist that did it from that country. We uh, we're equal. <laughs> Would you look at the numbers? Yeah, as far as because uh, I would have just I didn't, what was it this past year? Last year they released the Afghan papers. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's fucking a lot of these guys up. Because my brother went in when he was 16, went to boot camp, came back, finished his senior year, and then went off to his AIT schooling or whatever, and mm-hmm. then went off to war. So he was kind of. That was his life. That was, you know, every he's now he's thinking for himself pretty and, and starting to realize and see. He's like, so you're telling me I did two tours over there and y'all don't even know why the fuck we were there. You were just sending us there. Yeah. Like what the Afghan papers said, like all the top colonels and generals that are being given orders from the Pentagon to spend all this money and do all this shit. And they're like, who's the enemy? That's all the, the response that was from so many of them. Like, who is the enemy? Who are we fighting? What am I doing here? Mm-hmm. what is going on <laughs> you know what the guys in flip-flops and t-shirts this isn't we're not fighting an army or anything of course these people are going to be mad you know we come in here and take over their fucking shit yeah, yeah eventually someone's going to be you know wouldn't we yeah you, you know <laughs> like we have movies about that shit we have people dedicated to waiting for the government to try to take their guns or come on our <laughs> our fucking <laughs> they just can't wait I've got a couple of those friends, and I'll hang out with them if it ever comes down to it. Yeah. I got a couple guns, but not like them. I I don't understand how some people collect so many guns. It's like, what the fuck do you need all that for? And they're usually like the heavy drinkers, too. It's like, hey, man, that's... We don't mix. (laughs) Didn't you watch the fucking video in school? (laughs) (laughs) And people get... People that are gun nuts... Like there, there's some of them are like really good people, but there's a lot of people that are just a little off kilter that kind of ruin it for those other people. I think, and it's just like, 
Yeah, the the there's certain ones that the people that stand for their guns and want their guns, but they don't care about the hundred round magazine mm-hmm. shit and everything. Like that's fine. Like that's me. I've all I've got. Most, I've all, I usually am carrying all the time, especially when I'm out doing comedy because. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was out there doing Prince Jigs open mic mm-hmm. or something, and fight breaks out. Two dudes roll up with fucking AKs or AR-15s out in the parking lot and shit, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to carry. When I first mm-hmm. moved here, my dad, my stepdad, a black man, said, don't go out there after dark. <laughs> like, I don't take my black ass out there after dark. Yeah. Like, a couple of the clubs I went to, I asked him about, and he's like, I don't even go there. <laughs> Why would you? That's funny. Yeah. He grew up down there his whole life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he's, he's got no reason. He's fine with being in the county now. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoys it. But Moving on up. <laughs> yeah, well, they've all got, they live, uh, well, my, some of them still live out there, but they have nice places, but it's still a rough area. Just a mm-hmm. block, you know, one corner. And it's like, what the fuck? Where did we? <laughs> yeah. You're in gangland all of a sudden. So, which per square mile or whatever and population it's one of the most dangerous cities yeah i was like that's what i was i was like oh california new york there's so many so much more crime but then if you do the number like yeah it's per like, person shit. Like per capita it's like yeah. the black people being um they say white people are killed more than black people by police it's like yeah when there's like 12% population is black and the rest, ba- you yeah. know, you know, 70 something white. It's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, and most white people are crazy gunk toting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a sick of hearing it. I've heard it, that, that, this, the thing, what's going on in my whole life growing mm-hmm. up in a black family. <laughs> yeah. I don't have no rhythm and it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. I've accepted it. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what to tell yeah. you. I got rid of my black, my fucking white privilege. <laughs> there. If I get pulled over, I get searched too <laughs> and handcuffed every That's time because they're like, oh, this is an easy one. Why don't you step out of the car, Mr. Williford? Come on. <laughs> I want you to pee in this cup. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't even fuck with them now. I don't even try to make if if I have it on me and they're like, you got anything on you? Yeah. <laughs> at this point i've had so many weed charges it actually helps me out because when i get to court especially with the cameras last time i got busted which was years ago before they the camera thing was a big deal they mm-hmm. had me on camera and i was like yeah i got some on me like i got two joints in this bag here man and i was gonna smoke after surfing and the judge was like unsupervised probation right you know 170 something dollar fine and then he realized uh and he like looked at my file. And he's like, you know, you got like nine of these here in this county. You're gonna be a lifer. And I thought he was about to hit me with like an habitual charge or something. So my heart sank. I was like, I'm going to jail for weed. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought about this a little harder. And then I was like, What do you mean a lifer? He's like, You're gonna do that stuff for life. And I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> So he's just like, well, we'll just keep taking your money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the one I got after that, he's like, you know, you've probably funded it because all that money that goes towards all the fines and everything goes towards our school system in Carolina. Mm-hmm. He's like, you've sponsored probably a whole classroom. You know, you've probably <laughs> bought new history books or math books for the one whole class. I'm like, give me a plank. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that to him in court. I should have. No, these guys don't play. I've watched them put people in jail for a, a speeding ticket, but wearing having their pants sag. That's yeah. crazy. Like it's that good old South, like deep. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I've seen guys, the judge go, "I'm gonna let you do this. You're gonna get in your car and you're gonna get out of this county. And if you ever pulled over here again, <laughs> and it's like, what am I watching? Like what fucking movie is this? <laughs> but." Yeah, like last time I was there, you couldn't pay a fine with a debit or credit card. They didn't have a system to take debit or credit. You had to have cash or a cash year's check. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, because I remember I was like, I'm not going there. They're going to arrest me again. Just pay it over the phone. <laughs> couldn't pay it over the phone. <laughs> so, but now I'm good. I don't do anything wrong anymore. I don't know yeah. if you've ever been arrested, but it just sucks. 
I've only been arrested for like an unpaid traffic ticket. That's just dumb shit. Yeah. I was, those are the kinds of things. It's like, really? I mean, you kind of <laughs> knocked on the door and be like, hey, man, did you forget about this ticket? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had paid a lawyer to take care of it, and they apparently didn't do their job. <laughs> oh, yeah. So then I, I got pulled over, wasn't breaking the law or anything. The guy just thought I looked suspicious. Cause, and then he ended up running my plates, and there was a warrant. Oh, wow. And that's when they're all happy. Like, yep, I knew it. I could tell by the look at you. you <laughs> uh huh. And it's dude. like, dude, I had the same thing happen to me. He mispronouncing my name because my the J in my name is Husto. And he kept like, Justo, listen. <laughs> I'm like, look, everybody calls me JC, and my name's pronounced Husto. It's like, Justo, I understand if you're upset, Justo. Mm-hmm. It's like he started doing it. like He was like trying to upset me. I was just like, mm. God, fuck this guy. Yeah. And like, look, look, look. I'm going to get a towel so you don't get the back of my seat wet. We're going to take you in. And you're like, what if, why is my back wet? Like, <laughs> yeah, no. I had the same thing happen with my lawyer. I, me and my wife, when I first got with her, I didn't have my license. I thought it got taken. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they had said it was taken. The DMV, I couldn't renew it or get a new license. And then they set out a warrant out. So I had hired a lawyer. Went all the way back to Virginia Beach where this problem was at. Mm -hmm. Tried to turn myself in to like three different police stations and two different courthouses. They couldn't find me anywhere in the system. So I was just like, fuck it. You know, fuck Mm -hmm. these guys. Still kind of wasn't able to get a license. And my wife somehow got them all on the phone a couple years ago, uh, both the DMV and the courthouse. And the courthouse just didn't fax over the paperwork saying that. So I was clear in their system, but not in the DMV. And it was showing a warrant for it in their system, but it was shown clear. And so I was like, so I've had my license since I was 19. Like, I've been driving illegally. You know how stressful it is to drive <laughs> fucking illegally. Like, I, every car I've owned had to have cruise control. <laughs> But yeah, I found that out. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." So I got my license back. I never thought I was getting that shit back because I tried so hard. I paid like I paid like two, three grand to a lawyer to Mm -hmm. this chick that I just I still can't get a hold of her. She got pregnant and went on maternity leave, and I've never been able to find her again. (laughs) I even had their law firm try to call me and ask me for the rest of the money that they did nothing for, (laughs) (laughs) like because they're like, "Oh, we can't figure it out. We don't. You're just gonna have to go turn yourself in." And I never had to go turn myself in. It was a whole trip to Virginia Beach from here. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was a, I was basically a turd in the punch bowl because we went out there for my sister's wedding. And mm-hmm. the whole time we're trying to do wedding stuff. Uh, they're trying to, everyone's worried about me getting locked up. I'm the best man of, for her husband. And it's just, <laughs> I was like, it's going to suck. But, hmm. Never, uh, I haven't been to jail in a long time. I plan to keep it that way. That's good. I don't leave this motherfucker. I stay. <laughs> As I go do open mics, other than that, or work. Yeah, but mm-hmm. nah, cops don't mess with the working man too much anymore. Yeah, especially the last time I've been pulled over and they see my car, like they they would like looked in and uh, I got that little Chevy Spark, but mm-hmm. I got everything you need to build a house in that yeah. thing with a little roof rack I can put on and a little trailer hitch for a, a little tray thing and they look in there and it's stacked to the ceiling up to the head <laughs> with just <laughs> saws and fucking all kinds of tools and they're like uh you're on your way to work <laughs> yeah all right go on <laughs> they don't want to search that shit i don't want to search it i haven't gone through it <laughs> like, yeah there's so many tools i was like i'll just buy a new one <laughs> like, i'm not <laughs> going through all this shit it's like a tetris game to pull it all out ah, that sounds <laughs> sounds like a pain in the ass dude so when's your next show? Are you doing uh, that shit over there at the the uh, Red Flag? I hear that's a really I nice just show. did that one. Did you do that one? Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah. Like it's uh you know, it's still weird how like to be where everybody's all spread out and They're not able to not having anybody life. close yeah. to you or anything like that. Um but it was a really good venue. Uh, Gary put a I mean it was it was a little bit of a long show, but he like Everybody, when they put their first show together, they make it too long. Everybody does. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I I was had all kinds of plans for those Bobby shows, like mm-hmm. all-nighter. And then I started 
you had said something to me. Somebody else said something. And I really, I checked out a podcast that yeah. was all about producing a, sh- a comedy show. And they're like, yeah, nobody wants to be at a comedy show, you know, more than like 90 minutes. Like, 90 that's minutes, true. man. <laughs> that's about the extent yeah. of people's uh, attention span. You gotta um, be really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be at, I'll, I'll be down in Springfield on January 2nd. Um, I think the venue's called Music City. This guy he kind of hit me up out of the blue. I didn't so, Who was it? Richard? Uh, I can't remember who it was now. Uh, <laughs> I, the only person I know there is Richard Bailey. He's, uh, I met him at your open mic at, down there at that little bar. Oh, that might be why he hit me up. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, to me, it was just somebody out of the blue. <laughs> uh, yeah. He was he's pretty funny. He was... I, uh, um, he did a couple shows, I think, with Kyle Fields. You know, you know Fields? Okay. Yeah. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, he's... Kyle Fields is hilarious. He's one of the best guys on, out there doing the mics with us that, mm-hmm. like, as far as crowd work. Yeah. His whole thing is crowd work. I have watched him do a video of him doing a set at an old folks' home mm-hmm. recently, so he couldn't get all close to it. He actually had to do just jokes, mm-hmm. and they did not do well. He was basically <laughs> trying to explain some movie the whole time to him and he like got his phone out and he's like reading the description that's <laughs> it was funny. like man it's brutal watching someone do crowd work that <laughs> yeah. they, there's no crowd to work with so um, and then um i don't know where the venue is but there's a show um locally it's a uh, jay jay the comedian's putting it together um or the comedianologist is what he's referring to himself <laughs> as. It's the nicest. Like, yeah. He's always is in a good mood. Yeah, he is, man. <laughs> he's a good I guy. like that dude a lot. Yeah. But he's he's putting a show together for uh, for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to be on that one. Nice. Somebody ran, was, I think I just seen something yeah, about Yeah, by the old lady and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so is it cool if I do this show? Uh-huh. She's like, yeah, I don't want to go out and spend a ton of money. I was like, cool. <laughs> that's how we are doing it for Christmas and Valentine's Day mm-hmm. we're married yeah. she wants something go get it <laughs> <laughs> if I want something I better ask because <laughs> I always want something that's really expensive she knows I'll come home with another motorcycle or something <laughs> <laughs> well, where's the other one it's in there don't worry <laughs> <laughs> you gotta uh, sell that stuff sometimes man oh yeah I like the bikes all go I gave them up finally it was hurting my back and I really wasn't getting a ride all that much with my schedule. For, for a while, I was uh, building houses and bartending at the Sky Music Lounge out there off Cares Mill. Oh, okay. And uh, at night, so I was just going and going. And then all of a sudden, I just hit a block <laughs> where it's like mm. 10 o'clock hits, I'm done. I can't pull a two, three, four o'clock morning, you know, night again mm-hmm. uh, after building a house all day. When I was a kid, that's how I went. That's why I didn't feel bad about that unemployment because I've been putting in overtime my <laughs> whole life. <laughs> like, and I've always been a believer. Like I was like, man, they can hit me with my 40. Cool, tax me, get it. Mm-hmm. But my second job that I put in another 40 or 20, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be able to touch that. Like, let us get a fucking <laughs> break. Like, I just looked at the new tax shit they passed with that three martini lunch uh, tax break that's inside the relief bill. And it's basically just 100% of... Uh, uh, business owners' lunches can be covered. You could take a business meeting and, and mm-hmm. do lunch and everything, and you can basically write it all off, and the government will cover it. And that's their plan is to uh, it's going to help stimulate more people go to the restaurants. Mm. But I thought we weren't supposed to go to the restaurants. <laughs> no. It's and it's winter time, there's so all no kinds one's going to do stuff outdoor. In that thing that's like what? Is, what does this have to do with COVID? <laughs> yeah, each time it's just like what? What does that have to do with it? The dollar. How many millions for to research the Dalai Lama? <laughs> like, dude, I've got a friend. <laughs> you give him a couple hits of acid, he'll tell you all about him. <laughs> like, don't need uh, you to spend millions of dollars. It's like, oh, they're giving out money. We better, we better for this program and that program. We just... But, I mean, uh, that's something I've, I've always been intrigued by is how they get around on taxes. Like, mm. I've always wondered. Because I've always heard they paid less, and when you look at it, a lot of them do. Cause yeah, they basically know how to to milk the long term like, system. Yeah, take long term games and basically erase them mm-hmm. with um, losses and whitewashing. But they 
you, we could do it too. I mean, there's certain things unless you have enough money, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Like a, a shell corporation and a, a, some tax safe haven, they're gonna have, the bank that you hide that money in is gonna, you know, is gonna charge you fees that are so high that it's not really worth it for somebody like us. But we right. could have an LLC, and you could pay all, you could pay for every single lunch and all your employees. That, let's say you have a crew mm-hmm. or the guys you work with, you could take them all out to lunch every fucking day and write it off at the end of the year and get it all back or not have to pay depending on how your portfolio is. And I mean, you could still do an LLC as a comedian. Yeah. Well, that's the plan eventually for this. How what I've looked into I hear a lot of people do sole proprietors and it's like, mm-hmm. I don't see the point in that. That doesn't give you much protection. Right. And that's the whole point of an LLC or starting that unless you're just using it as a credit scam. You know, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that do that too. I mean, that's a big problem with our system and our accumulated debt that we're having. <laughs> <laughs> you know, One dollar in, ten dollars comes out from the bank. And right. So, I don't know. Can't fucking beat them. I'd love to join them. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it every time. I'm like looking at Bitcoin with all my little bit of money I got in it yeah. and seeing it go up. I'm like, oh, twenty percent. It's already back. Oh it's yeah. Already be- like twenty three. 24,000 we're flirting with. Yeah. And, and I had sold like a shit ton right before because my, we couldn't, I forget, it was like access or something. We got new cards mm. and we didn't, she didn't switch them over the right way or something. So I had to get, put it in my other bank account and I sold a bunch of Bitcoin and I bought it at like 16,000 and it was at 20. One when I sold it, and the next day it went up to 24, almost 25. I was like, motherfucker, every time. <laughs> I'm like, 25 grand, if I could have sold it, that I would have been putting my portfolio like 30%. It just looks good. Back you in see like that spike up there. In 2017 upgrade. or whatever, like it hit the first time it hit 20. Yeah. And then, like, within a couple of weeks, was down to like six. <laughs> yeah, I have a one that doesn't trade. It's just a little too volatile. Well, well, actually, all the over and, time, uh, yeah, analysis and the SEC has come out and said they're at, right now, crypto, Bitcoin, not all crypto, mm-hmm. Bitcoin is less volatile than stocks right now. Yeah, I believe that. And um, every hedge fund, everybody, every big bank, every retirement investment hedge is dumping millions. I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars into Bitcoin and. They're 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 calling for like there's a bunch of analysts that are saying 100. There's 220 thousand I think is the top I've heard of it going by next year. And it's like 200 thousand. <laughs> I don't know. The, we would for sure I think see the dollar crash then. Yeah. Um. It would if it goes up that high. That'd be, that's a lot of money that's generated, and we're our whole economy is paying off of debt. You know, right. I mean, if we don't have debt, we don't have money. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what the U.S. The, the dollar is. It's just a federal note saying, "Here's that debt that somebody owes." That's all they are. And once I figured out and really learned that, I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> this is all wrong. This is crooked as fuck. <laughs> we don't have anything. It's not backed off of anything. Everything that it's backed off of has has horribly failed. Oil, mm. mortgages." Like everything that was a, the solid investment, you know, for years they said as soon as they basically used that to to make the dollar worth anything, it goes to shit. It crashes the oil. So I don't, I, we have to see a crash here soon. We've never had a market going up this long, a bull mm-hmm. market that's um, hitting record highs this long. It's never in history. Right. <laughs> We've never had a fiat currency like the American dollar last this long right it's never so and then you got the forum of economics uh committee in davos talking about the great reset and a monetary reset on their website it says you'll own nothing and you'll be happy about it i was like what the fuck with this guy standing outside and basically they're talking about eliminating all private property and all debts and the government controls it all and to <laughs> reset the monetary system that we have because I mean mathematically it's impossible to even pay the interest on the debt we have right I mean it's it's impossible we have no mathematician or supercomputer has been able to figure out a way to pay off our the 
the interest of our debt not just the, just just the interest we don't mm-hmm. know we can't <laughs> but we're debt based economy mm-hmm. and it's it's the, the only thing that's keeping us afloat right now is the military and mm-hmm. i'm all against wars but <laughs> if they pull every soldier out and they bring him here and there's no war in the military industry isn't actually pumping out everything mm-hmm. we're fucked because we got rid of all the uh, little things we just saw it in the pandemic the little stuff that chinese china makes the you know the mm-hmm. the stuff for the syringes of vaccines and and the uh, a lot of the products the small little stuff we don't care about those cuz we sell fleets of billion dollar jets at a time we we want the big potatoes Mm -hmm. all that little shit that's why we shifted all of our manufacturing jobs to china and mexico and all these india because it's it's cheap their labor's fucking slave wages Mm -hmm. and it's a big tax haven too they get tax breaks most of these companies that go there just like they just they don't have to pay taxes because they give jobs which doesn't make any sense at any point away. Anybody that just looks at, don't look at the trickle down economy as a, as a theory or a, anything. Just look at what it is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work and it never will. Right. It, it, it doesn't like you put consumers drive an economy and you can't have a consumer if the consumer can't work and have livable wages, like jobs being produced. That company can't grow if, they don't have the employees to expand with. So, uh, like Amazon coming here and wanting to put, they wanted free taxes. They didn't want to have to pay state taxes just right. for bringing a bunch of jobs here. Luckily, our grid wouldn't be able to handle their uh, factory, so they didn't come here. But they wouldn't be able to open that factory or have that factory wherever they go if those 100,000 employees that they're going to employ work for them. <laughs> right you know the, he can't expand he's he's stale he's he's a dud in the water like there is no you can't grow without them mm-hmm. you know and they can't make livable wages without you is the way it's supposed to be right but i think it's like what 40 percent of amazon workers are on um food stamps like 50 percent of walmart yeah walmart is crazy yeah, I got into it with the lady at Finn, and we used to go there. And we had one registered lady, one chick. She was in college, and she's the nicest chick. We always went to her, even if the line was long, because she was nice and funny. And she was complaining. She would complain sometimes about hours. She's like, oh, no, they won't give me over this many hours. I've asked, because I was like, why don't they have anybody else working here? <laughs> it's <laughs> Sunday, uh, yeah. you know, 12 o'clock. And the, there's a lot of people going to be grocery shopping and, and shopping today. And like, I've asked for more hours they won't you know they won't put more people on and i'll ask the manager because you know there's always those three guys that stand in there talking mm-hmm. and i'm saying why don't y'all fucking get on a register <laughs> <laughs> like maybe gives these people some hours you know stop right. worrying about your fucking bottom dollar it's walmart <laughs> statistically you guys are literally selling a product at every minute of the day <laughs> like all around the world you have walmarts that are open 24 hours a day mm-hmm. And they are constantly turning a profit at every minute of the day because somebody is buying something at one of those Walmarts at all times. Mm-hmm. So you can fucking hook a dude up. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're paying a minimum wage. Give them forty hours. Like it's, yeah, I, I don't. I don't get it because I don't know how I did it. Just when I first moved back here, was like, uh, like when I was twenty five, five, six, seven years ago. I was making nine dollars an hour. I don't know how the fuck I was doing, doing it, <laughs> but I just took whatever I could get so I could like, cause I nobody was really hiring, but KFCs and mm-hmm. shit like that. So did some landscaping for a while, and that's hard work for nine dollars an hour. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, yeah, it is. That's some. That's I learned real quick that I was gonna be the guy in the bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's is what it is, but it's. They got to do something because I don't see it going very good from here. Right. <laughs> I don't know if you p- keep your eyes on what's going on, but uh, we could be seeing a crash. If they don't pass that bill, we're fucked. And I'm not talking about for the $600. Right, right. I'm just talking about for the rent and mortgage yeah. moratorium, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, it's a moratorium. Uh, yeah. That, if they don't, 
My girlfriend's in real estate law. So oh, she is talks she? about it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she may know better than me. Because it's supposed to, it was supposed to expire in uh, January. Yeah. And there's like, I, f- I believe it's like 12 million that are over a month behind on their mortgage that don't have the money to pay it. I mean, we didn't have, what's the statistic that that little Asian Yang dude said? Uh, uh, like 70 something percent of the population of America can't afford a $400 surprise emergency. Right. You know, <laughs> I like Andrew Yang. Yeah. I w- at this point from everything I am, I'm a dumb fucking stoner hippie that just isn't interested and intrigued by the markets can see that it's fucked. Why wouldn't we put the Asian in that's toting <laughs> math? Like right. we need some math <laughs> like, right right now. And I hope they put him in. He's talking about mayor. I was just seeing, um, I think it would be good for him to get like New York mayor or something. Like part, that. part of his issue was he didn't have any experience uh, in politics. And if you're going to run as a Democrat, you, <laughs> yeah, well, you, got, you yeah. have to have already been a politician. Yeah. You have to have those, um, that you gotta have the DNC in your pocket, that's for sure. Right. Um, and that was a big. But he had some pretty radical ideas. I I liked that he had put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, and he um, answered the questions that they asked him mm-hmm. with facts. And I love. He never went to the. Well, we'll worry about that when we get Trump out. We gotta worry about getting Trump out. I was just like, dude, answer the question. He had nothing about Trump. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I like that he did that. He he always said, well, me and my team. We ran the analysis and we ran the re- we looked at the research and this is what has to be done. Yeah, <laughs> and it didn't matter how it fell, like if it was a conservative side or, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, fuck, he wanted to give everyone a thousand bucks like yep. <laughs> regularly. And, but the biggest thing, the most important thing with that thousand dollars, no one realizes that he well, part of that plan was he was going to f- make um, financial education. Uh, a mandatory thing, a real financial ma- ma- uh, education, not like the shit that they teach you when you go to school, because that's not real. That's not real. Mm-hmm. That's just what's in the book. That's not our financial system at all. It's completely different. And he wanted to implement that through like grade school all the way until they graduate. So once they graduate, they're handed a thousand dollars, and they know how to use that thousand dollars as a tool now right. instead of just either putting it in their mattress or spending it immediately. They knew. Hey, I know I could take this and I can put it into this, and that's a solid risk, low risk fucking fund. It's gonna pay me dividends, and uh, so I'm st- gonna continue to make profits. And it's a, it's the, the company's good. I buy their products. It's always, you know, it's staying strong. You don't see anything. That's what they need to be teaching. They don't teach you nothing about that. They teach yeah. you how to come in, be in class on time, leave. <laughs> and right. go to work, be on time, and put your money in, in a, a shit 401k hmm. that doesn't give you hardly which any hard, return. Which hardly anybody ever even offers a 401k anymore. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, I have to request. Anytime they do, I, I always, I was like, you match my my IRA. Fuck the 401. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to hit me taxes now and when I go to take it out if I make it to that age. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want it to be my kids to be taxed. So the 401k. 401k seems real sketchy. Yeah, but like, so they used to be, it used to be the best investment vehicle, um, especially the match, because that's an immediate, okay, so let's say it's a 5% match, that's immediate return. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, there's no other investment vehicle that does that. <laughs> well, no, the IRA, my old lady's. Uh, but not where it's like an immediate, like, the match is what I'm talking about. Oh, well, him, hers does 6% of the right. maximum that she can put in. and then, But yeah, no. But the great thing about the IRA is you can use it as an account to trade with. So you can invest. It has to be uh, low risk, very solid. Um, mm-hmm. There's only certain things you can put it in, but you can still put it into the different sectors and industries and really uh, – make your retire your your IRA you know actually you know build it that's how I forget the politician they asked him he they were like oh you how is your shit how is your IRAs like maxed out millions of dollars and stuff 
things like because I've tr- invested it instead of it just sitting there giving me two percent. I used mm-hmm. it as an inv- a, a, a investment portfolio. Right. And he, and he just invested. Because just a tax shelter. Because uh, yeah. usually you've got your mutual funds inside of it or whatever. Whatever. Uh, like it could be stocks, but I don't, yeah, not, I don't think not it's a lot not of stocks. stocks. It's more like probably ETFs, um, uh, like you said, bonds, um, mutual mm-hmm. funds. Yeah, I think I think most of it's mutual funds, but like some of them, I could see like investing into crypto. So yeah, it's moving. It's moving. We'll we'll see. Biden's um, the Biden's administrative, the lady that he picked, uh, she said something last year in an interview how she hates bitcoin <laughs> she's always asked about it and she doesn't because it's decentralized yeah so and, she yeah. wants to be able to like they want to have control over it yeah i'm surprised the feds haven't stepped in the federal reserve that being i mean as corrupt as they are and as criminal it's i mean they were created illegally mm-hmm. it was a it was kind of like what they just did with the relief bill they threw five thousand pages and said, and I vote on this in a couple hours. <laughs> How the fuck can you vote on a policy that's over 500 and 50, 500 something pages? How can you read over any of that? All right. You know, the largest spending bill that we've had to, to date, we've had the largest transfer of wealth in the past 90 days to the top 1%. Like they took all, basically almost a whole trillion dollars out of the circulation that the the average mm-hmm. <laughs> Americans use and it we won't ever see it my old lady doesn't get it I was like no they'll take it and put it in a tax haven and that money that we was circulating amongst the public and the you know average households is now not going to be circulating between us or getting taxed at the end of the year by the government on us so that's not going to create nothing it's just going to get in our numbers are going to get you know deeper and deeper with debt but I, I like what Robert Kiyosawi says. Mm. Good debt, you know. Yeah. Don't own shit. <laughs> have you know what? Basically, he says, don't own shit. Just have all good debt, like buildings and shit mm-hmm. like that. And I wish I would have had the money to get into that. Oh, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, yeah. I went down that when I was a kiddo. He was very. I I, I think it's funny. He's got YouTube videos out now too. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, these these fucking guru guys, like they are <laughs> a joke. They are scam artists. They figured it out because mm-hmm. pump and dumps become pretty much illegal. And you have a blatant one, but that's all that they're doing is they get these like Timothy Sykes, penny stock millionaire trader. He has fucking thousands, if not a million followers that are following this watch list of these penny stocks mm-hmm. that are low float stocks that don't have very many shares already. And he's like putting a watch list out and his thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers go and fucking buy that, you know, mm. buy those stocks that he's already bought at super cheap. Right. And he just waits for it. go up. You know, and, and then he yeah. dumps it and everybody loses money but him. I know that's what he's doing. Because I, 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 I believe me, when I first saw his, his little shit on YouTube, I was like, oh shit, I'm going to learn penny stocks. And then I looked into what penny stocks were. I was like, I'm yeah. not getting into penny stocks. <laughs> It's like uh, shorting this company. You, know, you better, you got some balls to short a company because you can just lose everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it goes down, it can, because it can go to zero. Mm-hmm. And you owe everything back on that, on top of however much that the the difference is. I uh, stay away from shorting. I don't know if you trade or have ever tried to. No, I don't mess around with it. Yeah. Like, I always just put my stuff in mutual funds. Nice. So Somebody's intelligent got a hold of you um i mean it's not like i'm rich or anything <laughs> right but you know where to, yeah, I you know what up, to do with your money i opened up a roth ira a long time ago oh. and then uh, i also had some mutual funds so that i had something that was not completely liquid but at least i could do a little more with it yeah um so one thing i hate about bitcoin is it's not right like gold it's not that god currency that mm-hmm gold and diamonds which i don't understand why those are so valuable i mean when it comes down to it if everything is shit it's water and food those are the yeah. two like water is one of the main i mean it's just so i can eat people people agree upon something having a certain value to it yeah. and i mean if that ever changes i mean that's part of the problem with just currency in general 
it's worth this much, and then somebody else decides to sell it for this much. It's oh, like, yeah. well, now it's not worth that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I think that one of the big, well, the fact, or that they can sell it before they ever even own it by mm-hmm. like shorting, which mind boggled me for the longest time. But things like gold, like the, like that's that has to do with there being the they're rare in comparison, like when you get into like precious metals or anything. But like but that. are they? Because they're opening new gold mines that are full every year. There's multiple gold mines. There's yeah, actually gold like, mine about, permits being like held off. Mm. You know, if, if I, yes, it's rare. It is something, but it's well, not. it's rare compared to other metals. But is it? Is it a conspiracy? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the aliens, man, they want all our gold. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a good story. I don't know if you've ever read it. Which one? The Epic of Gilgamesh. No, nah, it's the uh, oldest. It's, it was written by the ancient Sumerians, which is the oldest civilization mm-hmm. known to man. They created right. writing. It's the first civilization to create writing. And they had all they found these thousands of cuneiform texts, which is basically pottery with their writing in it glazed so they last forever, basically. Mm-hmm. And the first they found the story, it's called the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it's basically the creation of man and the fact that there's a planet or something out there in it called Nibiru where these beings from the stars came and mined gold for their atmosphere because it is that's what like nasa uses it in their shields and everything Mm -hmm. because it uh, reflects but the powdered form of it not like gold they don't have gold bars (laughs) right 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 right. Um, but they came here because their atmosphere was dissipating and this is this is the oldest story no man this is why it's so interesting is because of how much science there is Mm-hmm. And we wrote it off as myth because the stuff they're talking about back in the days, they're like, that's not real. Like, mm-hmm. That's that's all just magic. But now we have actual science. But it talks about Inki and Alil, which are the Anunnaki, the rulers of them, um, having a work rate, uh, a work uh, people called the Agigi. And they're the ones that are here to mine the gold for the Anunnaki. And they revolt because it's not in the oceans like it is in their planet. It's in the fucking... In the, in the ground and it's a lot harder work so they revolt and they so what they decide to do is to genetically splice with their dna and a primitive uh mammal that's here mm-hmm. and they did that a few times they you know it took a f- couple different techniques and that's what i like about it is that they, they actually said that they failed they they had to tweak things mm-hmm. and add different ingredients like the neanderthals uh, yeah right. that would make sense <laughs> yeah exactly how we have uh Before what is it's a homo sapien oh, right. yeah well there's the other one that they the um because the uh, fuck the one that they found uh recently i found a um a skeleton of one not just they've only had a pinky or a finger of it uh, like that they thought of but now they found a girl in a wa- underwater cave or something like that um hmm. that's actually african and they found it off the coast of costa rica and as old as it is they ne- they it, it, it proves that, that africa may have hit north of <laughs> the north america um lands before it, uh the vikings which were hmm. the first well not for china that, that's a debate right, right now. the chinese say it's them um the Vikings don't have any say because they're they're not alive <laughs> anymore. Right. But they found a lot of stuff in Canada that's uh, Viking huts, a uh, Viking like those. What are those mounds that they used to build? I don't know what they're called. Uh, but but yeah, they, they anyways they the, the uh, they created the 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 uh, first human, which is named Atom. Hmm. And the whole story it talks that you hear, you see after reading it, and you don't have to read it. It's they have audio version <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. that actually break it down into human English now. Um, and basically Adam um, and Eve or whatever, they, there's that in there. They talk about that. There's the flood. They talk about the flood because they become savages the they start they're, they're just fucking and, and then, you, mm-hmm. you know they we reproduced way too quick so they were going to flood the place but the person that created them inky or a uh felt responsible for them because they're an actual loving mm-hmm. uh you know intelligent race and they she created so she warned them about it which noah 
and about mm-hmm. the flood. The flood happened. They talk about all that. And they uh, you can find pretty much every aspect of every major religion, whether it's hmm. the Indians in India or the Muslims or the Christians, and you can tell that they just took bits and pieces of the, throughout of the, the rest of their shit. And then yeah, because there's, there's a lot of it matches up, and they're still finding texts every day like archaeologists then they're finding them um and they just actually found uh a group of like tribes people that genetically they're the oldest they're the 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 theory conspiracy whatever they want to call it is that they're the anunnaki they they Mm -hmm. have the closest like bloodline to the Anunnaki that was spliced and everything because there's something in their genetic code that's just ancient that the, the scientists are saying in this tribe and they actually speak the um, a broken form of ancient Sumerian language so I don't know there's a lot of stuff they find out there in Mesopotamia area like hmm. I, I, I love the archaeology shit I don't know if you listen to Graham Hancock or ever nope. seen any of his stuff He's got a theory that there was a civilized, um, advanced civilization um, prior to us. Hmm. And that there's, because the Sphinx, and if you look at the Sphinx and the erosion, and they tricked a famous geologist and erosion specialist by just taking pictures and zooming in on the erosion on it. And he's like, oh, this is absolutely erosion. He pointed out every little scientific geological thing about the Sphinx that shows that there's erosion. Well, that's, predates when it could have been i mean that puts us back to when they say we were still hunters and gatherers hmm. like th- hundreds of thousands of years and then they uh they found Glebeke tepe which there's st- in turkey which as they get deeper they find more which is crazy because they go deeper they, they basically it's like this it's just like the pyramids, it was like a religious thing or, or ceremonial thing, mm-hmm. but they did everything like perfectly true north and, and with the, their um, their star systems. But as they go, they would do it, and I guess every hundred years or something, they would bury it and then redo it. And as they get deeper, the actual stonework of all the the the, the animals and stuff that they they have in this temple area mm-hmm. get more and more advanced and intricate, as if like we digressed it should be getting like less and less detailed and just more and more primitive until you get to the bottom. But no, it got more, it got more and more advanced. Like it went from just like block squares with chunks in it mm-hmm. and they get to the bottom of a section and it's 3d carved, like hollow stone and stuff, Jaguars and all kinds. It's like a masterpiece of art and it's predates the, the Egyptian pyramids what they say is what they're claiming is by like 10,000 years or some shit like that, mm-hmm. which once again puts us as hunter gatherers is that in that time frame, right. like they, they are, um, the academic field has really pushed us into being able to, I mean, boxed us from being able to really find any, uh, evidence. Like they won't even allow you to dig that deep to where we would find the evidence if there was an advanced civilization that old. And they have found a lot of artifacts like, little teeny tiny doll that they found in a well that they were digging down that had to have been where they got it was like hundreds of thousands of years deep yeah and they found a fucking a coal a piece of coal that they broke open and had a metal little cup in it like a little cup Mm -hmm. that was encased in the the coal which takes millions of years right they found footprints like human upstanding upright footprints and shit like that that's it just throws all the academic shit out of the, like none of it makes sense then. <laughs> and then they look at the Sphinx and they're like, Oh yeah, that's gotta be this old with that much erosion and the pyramids. And they won't allow them to ask. They won't allow them to search any of underneath the Sphinx. They know that there's a couple caverns. They've done the, the uh, ground penetrating radar mm-hmm. and there's two big square caverns that they've, and the myth is the legend is that that's the, um, the most important books from the, the great library of Alexandria that they are uh, when Christianity first really originally formed, mm-hmm. um, they took out Alexandria and Alexandria was just a place to where all uh, the, the Alexander, the great got to this point of where he book, he realized knowledge was power. So 
if you came into his harbor, if they confiscated all books and they wrote copies of them and then gave you the copy and kept the original. And he had this huge, huge library. And he offered, he allowed any religion and everything to, to coexist together. So there were statues of, you know, deities and gods and all that. And they made the one mistake by allowing the Christians come in and, and practice religious freedom. And they, one Christian became a politician, for, you know, in that time mm -hmm. and revolted and basically burned down the city and killed anybody that wasn't Christian. Huh. <laughs> and that's Ew. where we lost the, uh, the great... Uh, library of alexandria and he supposedly had stuff like ancient knowledge like all the stuff people are like how did they do that back then that kind of stuff writings from like uh Arist aristotle or whatever and mm -hmm. and all of those great fucking philosophers and, and and which if you read some of that shit from back in the Roman, those those people like aristotle and um uh, what's the other like socrates one? yeah socrates Plato. like it's like holy shit like they some of the stuff, it, it's like, damn, mm. the way they, the, how deep they could think. And, and you know, it's, it's pretty shocking to me because I'm, you know, can't go past a year. <laughs> <laughs> and what am I? This is my year. This is what I got to do. Right. <laughs> but you, 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 you hear of like Einstein, the way he came up with all of his theories and shows he sat in a chair and like just had brain experience. He was like, and imagine himself on a, a, a beam of light traveling through the space is how he came up with the theory of relativity. Uh, yeah. Like, That's insane. You, you know, it's like, a, what kind of fucking brain does he have? Which yeah. actually, if you, they did studies on it, they have it at the Smithsonian, his like the endings on his brains for like the sensors and everything that the, the, the synapses. The, yeah. Like, he had like twice as many as the average brain. Like, so he was able hmm. to, he did something to where he was able to, like take it to the gym. He was doing something, and he had really weird sleep habits. Supposedly, hmm. yeah. Like I said, I turned into a big geek back in the day. I couldn't stand watching TV. Now I'm like, <laughs> shut up! The fucking Einstein documentaries on, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, it's interesting now. When I was a kid. I wasn't. Uh, That's funny, man. But you seem like you know a lot about the, uh, the stuff. You're a lot more educated than a lot of some of the other guys I've had on here. <laughs> a lot of the guys I've had talking like Bukovic and, and Elijah because he was down here mm -hmm. and um, had him come on and I was talking to something about finances and, and investing and they were just like I should uh, I should pay you for that class <laughs> I was like no don't take any of my advice <laughs> for investments no I got a I got three undergrads and a master so oh wow yeah, yeah. you know see so. you just I guess being a comedian kind of puts us in a dumb, dumbs us down as a, in that <laughs> class. It's like he's a comedian. Right? Yeah. Well, there's a couple though. Like the um, was it Mo Alexander? Was a fucking physic um, math physic math teacher, or was a physics major and hmm. and taught like physics and stuff and. He really did. Like when he started talking about it, I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and you're just telling fucking dick and bitch jokes. Like that's what he's doing. Like he's calling the crowd a bitch and telling dick jokes and yeah. talking about how fat he is. And this man is actually more intelligent than probably half the people put together in that I room. Th I think a lot of comedians are more intelligent than what people. I mean, it, it, to be able to tap into um, just even the concept of what is humorous to people, like. It, some of the smartest people I know are comedians. They may not be the most educated people, but they're intelligent people because yeah. there is a difference. Oh yeah, and yeah. um, I mean, because I mean, if you think about like, there's a little bit of insanity to even pursuing this because we're standing up in front of complete strangers, essentially saying like, "Please like me." We're trying to, if just with our voice, try to evoke one of the most powerful human emotions which is laughter <laughs> that can't be faked you can't fake that like mm -mm. people can have a fake laugh but like making somebody laugh can't be faked and laughter is known to you're healthy it's healthy for you to laugh mm -hmm. like a true laughter like laughing at something that's funny is healthy for you yeah. all the stuff that's all the chemicals and all that shit that i don't know the i know the stuff that's released in the brain the serotonin the yeah, dopamine, dopamine and all the endorphins yeah the endorphins yeah. that are pumped in 
and that's a big reason why I do comedy. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I, I partook in the, uh, I dabbled, you know, I drank a Chardonnay here and there, <laughs> <laughs> did a line here and there. Yeah. I was more addicted to money back then than it was to drugs, but I enjoyed them too. I'm not going to be mm -hmm. the guy that's like, Oh, it ruined my life. Cause it didn't obviously. Yeah. I mean, um, but you get that rush from, I feel that public speaking for, you know, getting mm -hmm. someone to laugh. Yeah, you don't get that. There's nothing better you, than you having spend, a good set. Yeah, you don't. You spend lots of money on that feeling. <laughs> I know <laughs> lots of people that spend money on that feeling. There's nothing like having a good set. Yeah, or the the best one is like someone comes up and says, that you know has seen your set before, and they're like, "Man, that is my favorite. Uh, that joke is one of mm -hmm. the best jokes I've heard." It's like, really? <laughs> it's awesome, man. Yeah, that's it's an awesome feeling. Or being compared to someone famous. It's a lot of people don't like that. But when someone comes up to me and is like, you know, you're a lot like such and such. And I know the comedian they're talking about. It's like, ha, thanks. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you trying to get me off? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so you don't have much going on besides out of town in Springfield. When's that? That's going to be, Springfield's going to be on the 2nd. And then uh, the local show is going to be on... February uh, 14th. February 14th. Okay. So, but there's a lot of times I get asked week of. <laughs> it's just sort of how it works out. Yeah. Uh, so until, any, until, until things are way more opened up, I mean, we really don't know. Like, there was so many shows that people would book and then cancel and then book and then cancel. Well, like, you know how it went with Bobby's. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, cause I, they had to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was, I had stuff booked for Florida cause we were going out to Florida for vacation. We we're just, we were packing up the car before when the day they shut everything down. Cause we had an Airbnb for two weeks. We we're going out to a big, like reggae, like ska sublime kind of music, mm -hmm. um, big festival roots of reggae. And, um, you don't strike me as a reggae guy. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a punk rocker. Which really, I am. <laughs> no, but that that's something I called Gary out for. I was like, you know, you, you, you seem real punk, which is ironic you, that you're really into being a Democrat or a Republican. <laughs> yeah. That's like the complete, uh, you're an oxymoron, Gary. Yeah. Like, you don't like politics. and uh, like You hate politics as a punk. Like That's part of the anarchist thing. Mm -hmm. And we had a good laugh at that, but... But yeah, we we're gonna go out there for that. I had a couple shows booked for uh, Florida, which was cool. Which I, I I had two ten minute spots set up, and a lady had me on the list for her open mic. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it, that was, I was only six months in, so I was stoked. Yeah, and you know, that's all a big got deal. Shut man. Down. <laughs> yeah, it got, yeah, all got shut down. I was pissed. But and then the Bobby's place did too, and yeah, that got shut down on me twice, and I was. I yeah, I remember, I, was you were, yeah I, was like, I remember you were. Yeah, I remember you were. Fuck were. this shit. <laughs> I, like, I remember I'm, you were. Well, I'm, I'm a guy. I've already. It, uh, it only takes me a day to get out of that funk, and then the next day I was like, "Well, I got a relationship with the guy. I'll be able to, you know, once mm -hmm. everything gets normal again, we'll try it out. You know, unless there's enough shows going on, because it yeah. does that. You know, the closer it got, because it was like I canceled the week of. It was, you, you really do realize how stressful it was. It's a pain in the ass for first, show. Yeah. I hate running the shows. That's yeah. why I don't do it anymore. I'd rather just go out and tell the jokes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah after I've seen how, you know, everything, just as far as the, the finding the comedians, the, you mm -hmm. know, the getting, the lining them up, what do you, you know, how much time do you want? And then. Dealing with people's egos or whatever. Yeah. And then, well, just the fact that I had to deal with didn't know if there was going to be a sports plan because you didn't know if the cards were going to play or not mm -hmm. and it's a bar and they told me that i could have the full you know full control of the bar and the tvs turn them all off but they wouldn't be happy <laughs> at yeah. bobby's place right <laughs> at a sports bar i come in there and shut the tv off. i'm not so going to start a show off that way yeah. usually what i've seen in a i guess scenario like that is anywhere where it's facing the stage like where the audience is facing the stage anything that would be up on the wall those tvs are turned off but like over by the bar area where it's like separated then they'll leave those on for for the people that didn't come for comedy that's part of the, that's one of the challenges of doing a bar show <laughs> yeah yeah but then that was that was the one thing that the bobbies was really uh cool with it uh, because 
I told him, I was like, you know, if we're going to do a comedy show and because the, the people I wanted to bring in, like mm -hmm. I was talking to Greg Warren at one point when I first started talking to people and, was, mm -hmm. and I had planned on putting a little bit of money in and finding some decent, good guys mm -hmm. once I got it started and they even willing to pay what I could. <laughs> so they were allowing me to, they, they were like, we have security and you let me know when the shows are, we'll send two guys for the door and to make sure that they're not being rude and, nice. and, and He's like, you got full control over it. He's like, I want to get into something like this with my establishment. If I, you know, you know what you're doing. I was like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I did put together the backdoor robot comedy battle, roast battle thing. How did that go? That went really well. There was one issue. Mike started changing a few things up, like second to last day. Like He brought in a couple other people, and then he wanted to do, uh, like, Basically, we were he. We did a round. They voted, and then those people competed against each other. And it was like, no, hold up, <laughs> you for one put the date down. When I sent over the date for the show, he had waited like a week before he responded. And when he mm -hmm. responded, he went ahead and posted it. <laughs> so it was like I was giving everybody like a month, two weeks to sign up, and then you'd have two weeks after that you would. The, after sign up you would know who you were going to compete compete against mm -hmm. and you'd have two weeks to write material the roasting material against them right and then the next week we would have another show of round two or, i mean the next two weeks later and that's how it was just going to go every other um week and he wanted to do them all at once and i was so people had to pretty much after the first round go off of like just freestyle it yeah and it really did work out the best time was Quentin and Jason Dormeyer. <laughs> okay. Quentin, I guess, used to date or mess yes. around with yes. Jay. I'm, uh -huh. I'm familiar with this story. So it all came <laughs> out on the stage. Yeah. So, uh, Jay so Jason dates uh, Nicole, Nicole. Now, I think is her name. But prior to that, there was a like a fling. Right, and then yeah, one and of, I think Quentin says told me that he said. But someone's going to get hurt here. It's going to be me. I'm stepping away. You know, who knows if that's the case. Don't know. Don't care. But the fact that it came all out, like, but it was, this is the second time. Yeah. There was a girl before her that the same situation happened. Lauren? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was, I don't know if Lauren and Jason did, but it was Jason. I was like, how many sloppy seconds of Jason's are you again? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, fuck you. I, I, with them first <laughs> that's funny but yeah the, you could tell the the hostility because it went from just joke to joke and then it went to the quentin finally was like oh yeah that's why i fucked your girl or something like that and then it went just like it got really good because it was really <laughs> tense and nick kuvar was like standing up laughing and <laughs> i've never seen bobby's place so packed either and and so loud like they were like I went outside to smoke a cigarette, I remember, and it was just, it's all you heard was laughter. It was a really, really good show. Like, everyone had told me afterwards, like, you got to keep your name on that and keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, but there was one person that got fucked out of it, Cody. This kid named Cody Bear, I don't know. It was yeah. like Ed Sheraton. He killed it. He really did kill it. I know it. who Cody is. Yeah, and um, they, they said he didn't win, but he won. And we all said he won. <laughs> he knew he won uh, his round, but... I guess they just didn't get his comedy or, or something. Yeah. You know, because he is smart. He's, yeah, he's intelligent. Mm -hmm. I guess that is a real big form of intelligence, being able to play with the words the way we do. Because some things that he says, is, that's the kind of comedian he is. He, he like gives you that story, these bits and pieces, and, and mm -hmm. it's intricate, it's complex. You can tell just to get <laughs> you to this one little section that he right. wanted you to. With me, it's different. I'm going to put you there. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do a setup. That's what I tell everybody. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no transition, no setups. No, yeah, no segues. No, no. We're going from abortion jokes to Barney jokes to, you know, <laughs> you that's my favorite people. thing about it is I just go in, in, anywhere I want with it. But uh, it makes sense for the, like, your humor, too. I have a few that I've been building more and more, like you were saying, punching, like having a bunch of little ones. Mm -hmm. I've got those. And I even have a, a, a set that I wrote 
it's like it's like five or ten minutes worth of just it's actual stories because I couldn't find a shorter way to take these few stories and I know they're funny I know they're good because I've used them I just don't do the story thing but one mm -hmm. night I will I'm like you know I'm gonna try this shit out it's probably be during Black History Month because it's got a little bit to do it kind of ties in with <laughs> okay. that my stepdad <laughs> helped me with it <laughs> but uh, looking at about that time we've been here for a while huh Right on, man. It was fun, though. Yeah, this was fun. I'm glad you had me on. Yeah. So you got the show in Springfield on the 2nd, mm -hmm. and then one out here on the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. And Valentine's I was, Day. I always end up posting it on Facebook and shit. Right on. Well, I will have this up there by then, I hope, and have an actual podcast. Once I find a platform that does video, too, because yeah. it just seems like a lot like pulling the audio out of the video after everything I've already, because mm -hmm. I edited it all together. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, extract fucking audio files and take it to this Can't user. Can't you just YouTube it? Like, look up on YouTube yeah, how man. to extract the audio file. Yeah. There's tutorials everywhere. Oh, I know. <laughs> you can you YouTube anything. That's yeah. how I got this set up so far. Because <laughs> when I first got this stuff, it was like, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't it coming on? But, That's funny. Yeah, like, so... But yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, you're not gonna be at that fucking next red flag show then, because I'm on that one. Yeah, I won't be on that one. That's too bad. So. I always enjoy. It. Oh, one they're, thing I would want to, I, I did want to bring up that I watched because I looked you. I kind of, I couldn't find any LinkedIn on you, but <laughs> <laughs> I did see you did the show for um, Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like you yep. did the um, the one minute fucking. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, kill Tony. Yeah, I. I would love to do that one minute challenge. I think I could get them to laugh a couple times in a minute. I've yeah. got a couple. <laughs> it's one of those, uh, like 